because normally you you do a much later show. Don't I you? do, but I, when I was asked if I come in this early, I went, yeah, yeah, of course, no problem. And then I thought, oh, now I know why I don't because my body clock is entirely. Oh, way tell me about but it. I've had a few coffees. So T right. Today's later for me because I get up at three twenty. <laughs> Yesterday was two a.m., which is not normal. You still look beautiful. No, I don't. It's a lot of makeup. Lot of makeup. Petri, <laughs> I hope the show goes very well, Dr. Renny. Thank you very much. Thank I hope you have you. a wonderful thank holiday. Thank you. So many lovely messages to us, wishing us happy new year. Uh, thank you, and, everyone, and happy Christmas to you and to the family as well. I'm back tomorrow. See you at seven. This is Talk TV. This is Talk TV. Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished and fiery debate? Then join us for Crosstalk. One o'clock every weekday. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about sport today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Bravman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. The amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on Talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this is important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, I'm just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm I'm going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you discussion can't, can with you? you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. For the news that matters, for the opinions that matter, for the stories that matter, find me, Vanessa Feltz, every weekday at 4pm, only on talk, on TV, on radio, online and on your smart speaker. Hello, good morning. Do not adjust your set. It is Petri here uh, with you this morning at 10 o'clock and uh, normally I'm on in the evening at 11 o'clock until 1 o'clock. So this this is uh, this is a rare treat for me to be up at this time in the morning. Um, anyway, got loads coming up in the programme uh, this morning. As I was saying to David just a few moments ago, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Hungary blocking a 50 billion euro package for um, aid to Ukraine. 
um, and this was supposed to see them through the next few years. And, and of course, we've got a situation now where America is rethinking its aid package or its, its military package to Ukraine. Have we got war fatigue? Do we owe it to Ukraine, having said we will be with them every step of the way, that we actually follow through on that? And in fact, we do more. We get more involved to get this done, to push Russia back. Um, so we'll be talking about that in just a moment. So also the energy price cap hike. Um, this is now this is to help suppliers because we know they don't, they don't they don't make nearly enough profit, right? It's only in the billions, so it's not it's not really enough. Can't live on that. Um, so what they're going to be doing now is upping the price of energy for those people who can't or don't pay it. So those of us who do pay it will have to pay more to cover the costs of those who don't pay it. Is that fair? Is that reasonable? I mean, why don't you just become one of the people that don't pay it? I mean, I don't recommend that, frankly. Uh, but if everybody else is going to pay for you not paying, I, I don't understand where, where, where this is going. So we're going to be talking about that as well this morning. Um, also, I want to talk to you about the male contraceptive pill. Uh, British men will be the first in the world to test this new male contraceptive pill. Women have had to take care of contraception for many, many, many decades uh, since the 60s. So now is it time for men to do the same? Uh, this isn't a hormone blocker, this one, um, but will men take it? I'd love to hear from you. If there was a male contraceptive pill available, would you take it? Give me a call, let me know. Are you opposed to the idea? Are you totally against it? But there'll be lots of men who go, no, brilliant, because I, I won't be trapped into becoming a dad or I won't be forced into parenthood if I don't want it. So yes, I will take the contraceptive pill. And as women listening, would you trust a man who said, no, it's okay, I'm taking the pill? Would you trust that that's exactly what he was doing? Um, I want to hear from you on this, 0344 499 1000. I think there's a very good reason that the drugs companies haven't done this, and I think that's because men won't take it. But you can prove me wrong. Give me a call, 0344 499 1000. Um, also, in the next three hours, we're going to be talking about cults. Do you remember when we were younger, there was a big deal about cults? You know, your parents used to say to you, oh, don't, don't get stalking, talking to a cult. Well, apparently there were 2,000, 2,000 cults currently in the UK. So we're going to be talking about that as well. So all of that to come. And is your dog talented? I want to hear the talent that your... My dog has got literally none. Uh, he's got the talent for looking cute, that's it. Uh, so we'll be talking about that a little bit later on as well. But first, uh, let's move on to talk about Hungary. Are we leaving Ukraine in the dust? Are we leaving Ukraine just to get on with it? So let me know um, if you think we should do more to help Ukraine or less. Are you fed up with taxpayer money or ammunition going to Ukraine. Do you think it is time that we stop supporting them? The trouble is, if we do, what happens next? Well, Hungary, um, the Hungary's Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, has blocked a 50 billion EU aid package for Ukraine, hours after leaders sidestepped his opposition to agree to open talks with Kyiv on joining the bloc. A crunch stomach in Brussels broke up close to 3 a.m. Now, Orban, it basically, what he's saying is, look, they're never going to win, so we might as well pull the plug now. It, I'm paraphrasing, but that is pretty much what he's saying. Uh, and he says it's time for them to sit down. Now, we do know that he's an ally of Putin's. We've seen photographs of them recently shaking hands. So, and he's always sort of sided with Putin. Is this a step too far? Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, 0344 499 1000. Uh, joining me now, I'm delighted to say, is uh, Professor Anthony Glees, who's a European security expert. Uh, uh, Professor, good morning. Good morning, Petri. Great to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, look, it, it, this, I don't think this is a great surprise that Hungary has done that, but I think the timing's interesting. 
Well, the timing is interesting. And yes, you're right, it isn't a great surprise. Orban has been the skunk at the picnic for a very long time in the European Union. But the fact of the matter is that he hasn't actually vetoed giving the aid to Ukraine, much needed aid. He left the room for a cup of coffee when the vote was taken. And effectively, he has simply delayed it. It's not it's not the end of the world, to tell you the truth. He is a skunk in every sense. But this is not really going to stop things. And it's not going to push Hungary out of the European Union. They get uh, millions and billions uh, from the European Union. They pay in, like, you know, one billion euros a year. They get six billion straight back. And then they get access of many billions to European Union structural funds. He's not a complete idiot, Orban. He's trying to have his cake and eat it, and it's loathsome. I mean, that, uh, that is a, a good point there, Anthony, because it's so it's cowardly, actually, what he did. Um, it, it's like with our MPs in this country when they don't vote. It's like, no, we're paying you to vote. But So when you say, no, I abstain, I think it's cowardly. It, it show us who you are. And, and Orban walking out like that, like you said, it's neither one thing or the other. And, and I don't know how he thought that that would play. It looks bad. Well, it does, it, does, it does look bad, but he doesn't care. And the surprising thing is that Hungarians, there are enough Hungarians that seem to think he's super, <laughs> having his cake and eating it. But what's far more sinister about Orban is his relationship with Putin, of course. And many people do regard him as Putin's agent of influence inside the European Union. I think Putin probably thinks that. We shouldn't forget that Hungary gets oil from Russia despite European Union sanctions. And he also gets like 80% of the gas that Hungary uses. So he's, he's playing a horrible, cynical game. But, you know, what we have to stress is that he realises he doesn't actually want to fall out of the European Union. It's, it's in his interest. And I think those people who are looking at this fracas to say, oh, the European Union's about to implode, that's, that is simply not the case. And, and the figures, you know, the GDP of the European Union is like 18 trillion 18 trillion euros our own gdp in the uk is three so you know it makes obvious sense to hungary get quids in every single way but it is a it is a stress point for europe because the bottom line here is whether we in the uk can get on with our european allies it's very significant that rishi sunak's gone to italy uh, uh, a very much part of sunak's approach to try and do deals with EU members, but also to reinforce the aid that needs to be given to Ukraine, because Putin cannot win this war. If he wins it, we lose it, and, and Europe becomes less safe. Uh, and that's a really important point. But at the moment, are we really uh, helping y Ukraine? And, it, uh, and, I, and I think this is an, uh, an interesting a question because we are supply we're drip feeding them and and that in itself is prolonging the the war and the situation um do, do we need to go big uh with ukraine in terms of helping them uh, win this look it, nobody really thought it was going to go on as long as it has it it could go on for years and years people don't have the will to keep sending money to to Ukraine. Uh, like I said, America's already sort of, you know, thinking about not wanting to do it. Uh, Trump has said if he gets into power, he's definitely not going to do it. A lot of other people are saying we can't afford it. it, it we're being wishy-washy. And this is feeding Putin because he's now going, well, all I've got to do is wait it out and, and I can just stomp all the way through Ukraine. Well, you're, 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 you're right about Putin. I mean, whether it is Putin, whether it's Putin's avatar, his AI-generated <laughs> avatar that's speaking, God only knows. I mean, he, uh, talk about a man of mystery. But you're absolutely right. And what everybody is hoping for, what Orban is hoping for, is that in 2024, Donald J. Trump will be elected the next president of the United States. Trump has said, no more cash for Ukraine. 
he'll he'll end the war in 24 hours and and that is why you see that big smile on Putin's frozen face or is it his avatar I don't know Uh, it's a question of waiting and so Petri you're absolutely right we need to throw everything we have now as supporting Zelensky and Ukraine his fight is our fight because make no mistake Ukraine is just the first slice of what Putin actually wants. He wants to reorganize uh, the territorial space occupied by Russia to take back uh, those bits of the Soviet system that were lost in 1991, and in particular, of course, Ukraine, and then move on to taking back those states that left the satellite system, like Hungary, uh, the Baltic republics, even Poland. So his, his plans are a major threat. And it's not me that's saying that. It's the U.S. National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, who said that if we did not stop uh, Putin in Ukraine, American servicemen and women would once again have to get involved in what Jake Sullivan called a massive war in Europe. 2024 is going to be an absolutely pivotal year, partly because we fear the return of the chaos in the United States of America, but also because it could be make or break over Ukraine. But if it's a make for Putin, it's a break for us, all of us, even here in the United Kingdom. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been reading recently, Anthony, that, that basically it would probably take five years for uh, Russia to rebuild enough to to mount a campaign against uh, those countries in uh, bordering Ukraine um, and that we are ill prepared to do anything about it. Well, Petri, uh, you know, Putin, who again, <laughs> if it's him or his avatar, does not seem to age. And he clearly thinks that he is going to be there for a very, very long time. He's standing for re-election next year, as everybody knows. But what we must never forget is that Putin has had, or the system behind him, has had significant success this year when he got rid of the most serious opposition to him, uh, Evgeny Prigozhin. People like me always said it was going to be a fight to the death between one or the other, and it was uh, Prigozhin that got uh, knocked down out of the sky. So he's done that. The other thing is he's got the Wagner Group now in his hands, and they are going through Central Africa, pillaging, literally taking gold out of Africa in return for protection for dictators in in Central Africa. And we're, talk- we're talking, I think I saw a figure of, of you know, 50 billion Fifty wow. million pounds a month just from the Wagner Group go to the Kremlin, so they can afford to buy more weapons. That's the point. So yeah, he he he, he can hold his breath a long time, Putin. That's why we need to kick him out of Ukraine decisively now. Professor, thank you very much uh, indeed, as ever, Professor Anthony Glees, the uh, European security expert. So, what do you think? Do you think we go all in or all out of Ukraine? Have you had enough? of sending money there and not seeing any real uh, movement. Uh, 0344 499 1000. Be back in just a moment. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about sport today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Bravman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. 
for the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm I'm going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you discussion can't, can you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. Hello, good morning. It's Petri here with you uh, until one o'clock. And um, we're going to be talking a little bit later on about the male contraceptive pill because here in Britain, it's the first human trials, or the men are trying this out now in Britain, British men. Um, and I'll explain later how it, how it works. It's non-hormonal, which apparently was an issue for men before because they were worried that they'd lose their manhood. Uh, but... Uh, so it's non-hormonal, uh, uh, but it, it, it does obviously have to do something. So it reduces sperm count to practically zero. Uh, I want to know if, as a guy, as a man, you would take it. I mean, I have done hundreds of phone-ins over the years, right? And, and I've, uh, you know, if I do them on uh, parenthood or, par you know, you get loads of blokes calling me or sending me messages going, ah, oh, you know, I was tricked into fatherhood. I, you know, she said she was on the pill and she wasn't, and now I'm a dad, uh, and I didn't want to be a dad, blah, blah, blah. I, I wonder if this would change the landscape for you, because you'd be able to take control of your own fertility, right? In the, in the same way that women could. Um, can, could. Because really, for men, there's only the condom, isn't there? Uh, and that now has been ruled as being pretty much just a safeguard against uh, disease rather than pregnancy. So, would you take the pill? Would you take the pill? And, and if you're a woman listening, would you trust if a man said to you, it's all right, love, I'm on the pill? Would you trust it? Because I think there's a very good reason the manufacturers haven't gone into this, because there's not a lot of money to be made. That's what I think, because I don't believe that men will take it. I could be wrong. Uh, prove me wrong. Give me a call. Uh, 0344 499 1000. Also, I want to talk to you about Ukraine. Is it time to either step up or step out of the situation in Ukraine? Because this drip feeding of, of weapons and money and having Zelensky having to go and beg everywhere is not really the solution. We've seen that, right, over the last two years. It's, it's not the solution. Do we go big or do we get out? Give me a call. 0344 499 1000. You can message me as well. Uh, if you put the word talk up front, you kind of have to, otherwise it just floats around in the ether. Uh, and then your message to 87 triple. 
too. And many of you are already doing that this morning. Uh, but right now, I want to talk to you about energy prices because we've had an energy price cap, um, haven't we, to help us get through what's been it's linked very much with Ukraine. Um, but now, the government is considering letting the energy price cap be lifted in order that suppliers, those poor suppliers, um, who are only making billions, um, are losing out because people can't pay their bills. There's been a warning, though, saying that energy in Britain is almost by stealth becoming another branch of the welfare state. Ofgem this week set out plans that would result in households being charged an extra £16 on top of our energy bills to help suppliers recover almost £3 billion in bad debt the current position, it really means that we're subsidising uh, energy. It, it, we're becoming, it's like another a branch of the welfare state that you and I pay to support people who can't. I thought that was the government's job. And also, by the way, don't we already pay for the welfare state? So this is what looks like it's going to happen. Uh, I'd like to introduce, well, you know, uh, Dr. Roger Givalb, who joins me now, personal uh, finance expert. Roger, good to see you. Good morning, Patrick. How are you? I'm very well. Thank good. you. Now, um, that, it's an interesting article, isn't it? Suggesting that the, these energy companies are now becoming a, an extension of the welfare state. If we all have to pay in to support those who can't pay their bills, then that, that is, by all intents and purposes, welfare, a branch of the welfare state. I think it's a wonderful idea. I, I'm actually considering this morning setting up a campaign a national uh, campaign uh, that all companies that have bad debts should be able to raise their prices and dump them on their customers. I, I think it's a terrific idea. In fact, in my own company, we're a small broadcast company. We provide broadcast and content. I have um, a number of clients because of cost of li living who haven't paid us. And so I've stopped paying the staff and my electricity and gas and telephone and water and I'm thinking of what else I can pay next. And, and, and the wife and I are going on a luxury cruise with all the extra money, by the way. <laughs> I, I think this is, I, I think this is, I mean, this government, which should not have let this ridiculous idea for these companies making, you know, British Gas made almost a billion pounds and, and EDF at more than half a billion. I, they never should have let this see the light of day, this weak, spineless government of ours. What in the world are they up to? I can only think that it's what people are calling weaponized incompetence. So, in other words, when your husband, when your partner drops the dishes and breaks them every time you ask them to dry them for you because they don't want the job, I think that poor Rishi and Jeremy Hunt have suffered so much that they just want out. So they're, they're doing everything they can to be exactly like labor, because this is something labor would do. I don't care that it's only 16 pounds. It's absolutely outrageous to ask us to pay their bad debts. But this isn't the first, I mean, this isn't the first time is it? I mean you look at uh, things like the the banking scandal uh, and and you know uh, PPI and and all of that and and all the banks did when they had to start paying people back is is start charging us more uh, so it, it's not really unusual for, and, and by the way the banks as well just it's casino money isn't it that they're making in profits um, but we're, we're kind of used to this now but the, yeah, idea, I mean, the it, idea that you just don't pay your bill and somebody else will cover it for you is outrageous. It, it, absolutely. It's institutionalized. I mean, I don't know what goes on. I don't know what the revolving door deals are. I don't know how the uh, energy companies and the banks and all these other people uh, to whom you refer get to engage in 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 wrongdoing in incompetence and then get bailed out by us the muggins yeah. uh, taxpayers i don't know how the bank of england gets to raise interest rates and destroy the economy when it actually 
has done nothing to curb inflation. This government just stands there and does nothing. I mean, it, it you know, every time I see Petri, every time I see Jeremy Hunt, you know, wide-eyed, pop-eyed almost with this smug smile on his face telling me how well we're doing and they've cut taxes when of course everybody knows they've actually increased them by stealth and how wonderful everything is doing. It creeps me out. I, I just can't stop thinking Bates Motel, Bates Motel. <laughs> and when I see Rishi Sunak, I, I, I mean, I, I, he is just so weak seeming. You know, every time I write about him now, whether it's a note for a television program or an article for a newspaper, when I say his name, the predictive text types sunk. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe that is predictive. Um, it probably is. It, so I don't know why they're doing this. I, this is just insane. I mean, what company has its customers pay its bad debts? But, but well, we've got it with water companies as well. But let's return sure. to off, off, off Gem because Off Gem um, is saying they want to spread the pain evenly. Where's the pain for the energy company? I mean, they've just, they're making more money because they they managed to buy uh, their supply on a much cheaper market they're selling it in a very heightened uh, market the prices go up like a rocket and down like a feather we've seen this with petrol um which is way cheaper for them to be putting on the full courts but they haven't I pass that on. We've got green levies now being uh, on boiler companies for of £120 per boiler. And all they're doing now is saying, well, we'll get the customer to pay that. The pain isn't being spread evenly. The pain well, is being given to us. Well, you're right. I mean, first of all, there is no pain. You're making a billion pounds. What a are you complaining billion about? billion quid, yeah. Secondly, if there is pain, what's it got to do with me? It's your incompetence. It's your system. It's your fault. You wouldn't let, I mean, if your local news agent or your chemist or your dry cleaner or your your Starbucks or whatever, you know, not to name a commercial name, but, you know, Starbucks, whatever, started raising prices, telling you that they had some bad debts. I mean, you'd tell them to go jump in the lake. It, it's we, we are just in a, a nation. One side of the coin is that it's so tolerant and fair an understanding of, of, of the underdog and people's troubles. And I mean, this is the British spirit. But the other side of the coin is that we get taken advantage of by our own all the time. And we don't complain. In France, they burn things down for acting like this. You know, it's it's ridiculous. And this is, this is really the last straw. But the thing that I can't understand is, doesn't Rishi Rich and Jezebel the, the Hun know that they're putting nail after nail in their own coffin, Petri? I mean, it's ridiculous. How, how could they get elected with everything they've done to us so far? And every day there's something new. Maybe they're trying to burn it all down before before I'm, they, I'm saying before they leave. Yeah. It's weaponized incompetence. I've just broken another dish because I, you know, I don't want to do them anymore. Mm. But, you know, none of this, uh, this pales before what's really wrong with energy. As I've said on your program a number of times before, electricity is two thirds of our home energy bill. And our electricity is priced off the price of gas on the international markets, which as you just said, is manipulated by Putin. And that gas price is many, many times more than our electricity, than our gas actually costs us. If, if you go on the national grid, they have a real-time clock which shows you where our electricity comes from. Some days, only 20% of it comes from that international market. The rest comes from our own North Sea, renewables, uh, nuclear, wind, solar, etc. And And due to conventions in the 80s when the energy companies were nationalized, and they've never reversed it, successive governments have been told lately by Boris by John Penrose, the MP who invented the price cap, and by the way, says it's no longer fit for purpose, to decouple um, 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 uh, electricity from the price of gas, but they just won't do it. Now, when the price cap was close to 3,000 pounds, it was estimated by some think tanks that it would have been a savings in an afternoon of 1,500 pounds per household to decouple. And yet they don't do it. So we're, first of all, getting monstrously ripped off in what we pay for energy. 
the even the price cap needn't be 1900 pounds and, and now we're getting asked to pay their bad debts it's a joke and the thing that's shameful is neither the government nor the opposition will say a word about it but i mean also just very quickly as well of course we're already taxpayers we're already giving them uh, hundreds of millions of pounds to support sure. people who can't who can't pay their bill and now they want us to pay the rest uh, roger always a pleasure thank you very much indeed uh, dr roger gave up their personal finance expert how do you feel about that it's 16 quid extra a year um should we be doing this for these energy companies, helping them pay off their, their bad debt? They want us to share the pain. I don't see them suffering, do you? Uh, 0344 499 uh, Okay, I've got loads of texts coming in. I love this. Uh, Dave in Lewisham, uh, regarding the male contraceptive pill, says, I would 100% take the pill as well as using condoms. Good man, well done. Uh, Dave in uh, Lewington. Um, okay, there's, uh, here we go on the energy situation. My standing charge is increasing from 30p a day to 60p a day. What? That's outrageous. That's from Dell in uh, Swansea. So, do, do you mind paying? I mean, it's only 16 quid, but then we're covering all their debts again. Uh, right. Also, we've been talking about Ukraine this hour, and Matt has called in from Cheshire. Uh, morning, Matt. Hi. Good morning, Petri. Good morning. Uh, um, yeah, it's my view that we we should stop giving money to Ukraine, and I was always suspicious of where the money was going from the very beginning. Um, in what way? Be well, before we went in there, it was one of the most corrupt countries in the world. Uh, there were links with Hillary Clinton years ago, mm. and then obviously I think there's quite a competition for most corrupt country in the world. Uh, I, I will question you on that. I think there's quite a list. Oh, there's, there's definitely a long list, but yeah. it was definitely it was definitely up there. Um, obviously, then there's l links with Hunter Biden and Joe Biden with the energy company. And I think when Joe Biden leaves office, we'll find out a little bit more about what went on before he became president. And I think basically we're pouring money into a black hole. And although it's... So what, happens, know, it's what happens if we stop doing it? What, what, hap what in your view, happens uh, if, well, if Ukraine sorry, falls? Well, we're told that um, Putin will rifle through Europe in about a half an hour, but it took him two years to take 18% of Ukraine. The idea that he can then topple every army in Europe in under five minutes is absolute drivel. You know, Poland... But, but, but do you out. want to... Now, hang on a minute. But you're prepared for that attempt to happen? I mean, uh, you, don't, you don't mind if he wages war on the rest of Europe? He was never going to do that in the first place. Well, I don't he, think you know that. I don't think any of us know that. From everything that we hear and everything that we learn, he is not going to stop at Ukraine. Um, but, but... He is. That he, if, if you do, watch do you know him? Have you spoken I to him? I watched documentaries about him with Oliver Stone, the movie director, before this war even started. Mm, I wouldn't believe a, a movie or a documentary. It's not a movie. It's, it's three long winded interviews with him where he says that he basically tells Oliver Stone that um, NATO are encircling his country and he's mm. obviously quite paranoid about yeah, that. I, I, yeah, of course he's, it, yeah, he, is, he is paranoid about that and, and I, I wouldn't believe any politician of any persuasion to tell me the truth if, if my life depended on it. So I'm not sure I believe uh, 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 Putin. Uh, of all people, when he says, no, I'm no, not I don't mean any harm. I don't, I don't mean any harm. I, 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 don't, I don't want to go any far. I just want, I just want Ukraine, then I'll finish, then I'll stop. He's made it very clear I, that he wants to rebuild the USSR, right? Well, he never said that in that interview, and it was mm, a very that. good, honest, yeah. honest interview. How do you know? <laughs> I love the fact that you're so certain. Are you not the least bit cynical? Are you not the least bit questioning that he might have, I don't know, been lying? Uh, or, or saying watch, what he thought. Watch that... the three. 
watch the three interviews I've with watched, Oliver Stone. I've watched and read so many books. Oh, I'm reading one at the moment called Overreach. You should read it. It's very, very good uh, about Putin and about Russia. Uh, and and uh, I, I don't even believe he can he can lie straight in bed. I, I, I honestly, I just don't believe a word. No, I'm not says. defending him. I'm just saying that we're not without our own faults, and neither are the Americans. And we've pushed the limits of the boundaries of Europe right up until the edges of the Rus Russian Federation. And uh, all he's done originally was flex his muscles well, and, the rest and take Crimea. I mean, come on, let's not re revise history. Um, and we let him do it because we thought, oh, he'll be happy with that. Just a bit of Crimea, and then he'll move off. Then he'll go back to bed, crawl back down his hole. No, he didn't. Then he went for you. Then he went for more of Ukraine. Uh, that's what happens when you let these despots get away with it. Um, good to talk to you, though, Matt. Thank you very much indeed. Matt says we stop giving Ukraine money because um, it's a corrupt country. There you go. That's what he said. Uh, John has called from Somerset um, about the male contraceptive pill. John, would you take it? Um, one, no, I wouldn't. But to me. It's a license to um, create havoc. Oh! So I just think, I just think uh, every guy's going to go out Saturday night and say, "Don't worry, babe, I'm on the pill." <laughs> <laughs> that's true. exactly what I thought. I mean, I have to be honest. That's what I thought. But all, all you're going to start, it's going to be in it, and it's going to create unwanted pregnancies because the women are going to think they're safe. And let's be fair: to wear a condom is a twofold, isn't it? It's to stop you getting pregnant and to stop you getting disease. Yeah. And after time, when you're half drunk, a bloke ain't going to wear a condom, and a woman's going to think, "Well, I'll, I'll be all right." Then he's giving her something, and she's giving him something. <laughs> <laughs> and it's well, not. It's a, and it's not. It's not wrapped in a lovely bow. Let's put it that no, way. But it, it's true, isn't it? When you've had a few drinks, all you want to do is get it on. Not like, oh, I could just whisper you, don't worry, babe, I'm on the pill. <laughs> and he's got or something, and she's that nine months down the road having an unwanted baby. Well, there is that. And, and I mean, my cynicism was definitely, um, it was definitely going along those lines. But it's great to hear it from you. John says it's a recipe of a disaster. Uh, what do you think? Give me a call. 0344 <laughs>Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? 
If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. So. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you discussion can't, can with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. Hello, good morning. It's Petri here with you until one o'clock and we are discussing a couple of topics uh, this morning which I'd love to get your view on. Um, one of them is the male contraceptive pill. They're being tested at the moment by British men. Uh, and uh, I have a real, I think it's a strong theory that the reason that pharmaceutical companies haven't invested much in this particular uh, arm of medicine or preventative medicine uh, is because men won't use it. That's what I think. But then I'm obviously, well, maybe not these days, but I'm I'm not a man. So uh, 0344 499 1000, would you use the contraceptive pill? And also the male contraceptive pill. And also as a woman, would you trust it? If a man said, it's all right, love, I'm on the pill. Would you trust that? I suppose men have had to trust that from women. It's all right, darling, I'm, you know, I'm on the pill. So would you trust it as a woman? Um, right, uh, the other conversation we're having as well is about Ukraine, um, because um, Hungary, Oban in uh, Hungary, um, is saying that uh, he's, he's, he's being a bit difficult about more money going to Ukraine from Europe. Uh, America has already had questions about their money that they give to Ukraine. So I'm asking the question, is it time to go all in? or all out? Are you fed up with the amount of money and weapons that we're sending to Ukraine, or do you think that we need to help Ukraine win this war? 0344 499 uh, Now, though, this uh, story, I love this story. Martin Lewis, uh, who's the lovely money man, he says he isn't against parents buying Christmas presents for teachers, but he has admitted that he's got reservations about the personal and financial pressures it can put on people. And I certainly remember when my boy was at, at primary school and he bought presents for teachers, we were a bit pretty broke, actually. So he would go in with a, a cupcake or whatever. And I promise you this is true, that this was a state school, state nurse, uh, state primary school. The, the teacher would get Tiffany boxes and Champneys stuff and all of that from the richer parents. And I just thought, this is ridiculous. We can't compete with that. And actually, we shouldn't have to. Uh, so um, joining me now, I'm absolutely thrilled to say, old friend of mine, I wasn't, I didn't even know he was going to be on today. I'm absolutely delighted. Uh, Johnny Burrow, who's a teacher and broadcaster. Johnny, it has been a long time. It has indeed. It's lovely to see you and hear your dulcet tones. Oh, I'm so thrilled to see you, Johnny. I really am. I've been trying to get you on my show for so long. Uh, but anyway, uh, look, should we be buying gifts for teachers? I know teachers work very hard and it's nice to be able to say thank you, but what's wrong with an apple? Well, I agree. And I'm not talking um, about a computer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was listening to you talk about the cupcakes then and I was thinking that when I was a boy, what my mum used to do was she would make homemade fudge um, and my teachers loved it. But in terms of whether we should be giving teachers gifts, in general, speaking from the teacher's perspective. The key here is whether there is an expectation. Um, and as a teacher and as you know, an industry more broadly, we should not and cannot ever expect a gift. Um, and you certainly can't expect it to be high value. I mean, most teachers, you mentioned, okay, they're not always radically well paid, but no teachers go into teaching for the money. If, do you know what I mean? If you're someone who's primarily interested in money, you simply would not be a teacher. Um, and I think, where you have a problem, and I think what Martin Lewis is getting at, is if you have whole classes of children giving these luxurious gifts, and as you say, you then get into a kind of arms race of Tiffany boxes and boxes of champagne and all of that, that is unfair on poorer families. But what I would say to anybody listening, 
is that your children's teachers we're not expecting presents i always think in this there's a there's an italian striker called mario balotelli who many years ago used to play for manchester city and he would score a goal um and he would never celebrate which is unusual and he was once asked in a post-match interview mario when you score a goal why don't you celebrate and he said does the postman celebrate after he delivers a letter it is my job um and that's rather how i feel about teachers presence really um i'm teaching you because that's my job and because i want to do that and because i care yeah. about it now if a parent or a pupil wants to give a gift as long as that is sensible then that is a lovely thing and and i think teachers should absolutely be free to accept those most schools however do have quite strict rules on it and there is now often at most of the schools i've heard of there's a kind of value cap um because there is a a quality issue of if I'm marking a kid's coursework and exactly mum's giving that. me an iPad, that's a problem. That's there exactly what I was going to, to, to ask, because I'm sure that most teachers uh, like you, Johnny, are honourable, decent uh, human beings, but there will be some that are persuaded by, you know, a, a lovely yeah. uh, Chanel something or other, or uh, like you said, an iPad. And I, I've genuinely seen Tiffany boxes, uh, yeah. kids holding Tiffany boxes going into class and me thinking, well, uh, my boy doesn't stand a chance to see because we're giving him <laughs> cupcakes um, well. that I've made and he's iced, which looked like absolute oh. rubbish. But, uh, you know, at least there was some thought in it. But yes. I'm thinking, well, that, that kid who's given the Tiffany box is definitely going to get the best part in the school play no no and i i can see why you would have that anxiety but as teachers um firstly it is very obvious i'll give you an example i've got a prop petri because i'm that oh, kind of person there we go um it is, it is obvious when a gift is coming from a parent um and don't get me wrong that's lovely as well and when it is coming from a kid so for example i i'm moving school i finished i left the school yesterday and it was all very sad and very emotional and there's a girl who i've been working with a lot i've been helping her academically i've been helping her pastorally just sort of you know the general the whole point of being a teacher which is trying to make being a teenager slightly less difficult i'm an english teacher as you can probably tell from behind me um and she knows that my favorite book is anna karenina by tolstoy and so she came and found me and she gave me this lovely old leather bound oh. copy of anna karenina and a card which i didn't read until i got home and i must confess that when i then read it because i'm such a softie i did start crying um but the point i am making is that a gift most teachers firstly will respond more pos positively to an emotional gift like the cupcake dedicated by your son or the copy of the book that is coming from the child and i have never met a teacher who goes oh mr and mrs so-and-so are going to buy me a porsche therefore <laughs> uh, you know it it doesn't work like that um so there shouldn't be an expectation but i think that example as well shows that as a teacher it can be a really lovely thing mm. <laughs> if mm. it is if it is not and it so rarely is about currying favor and the card here is key right just like with any gift i had a few gifts this week and they were all lovely but they were almost exclusively in fact no exclusively accompanied by a card either from the kid or the parent explaining why they were giving it to me and um i think that also shows that parents are generous because i i was leaving right mm. so then they stand to gain nothing yeah um, it is nice as a teacher because you do if we're being honest don't get me wrong it's not the hardest job in the world doctors nurses train drivers there's all kinds of difficult jobs out there but it's a lot um it's a lot time wise often it's a lot emotionally if you are the person who is taking someone's difficulty and trying to help with that i think if those people want to express gratitude um they should be absolutely free to do so but in terms of the broader martin lewis point should there be an expectation no is it unfair on poorer families potentially but again i must stress your teachers aren't expecting it and and they don't think any less of you if you know money's tight bills are expensive cost of living crisis i wouldn't overthink it but it, it is interesting uh, though that you say johnny that that schools are now having to put a cap on well, on these gifts because the, <laughs> you know because the, it it does get ridiculous it's like the children's mm birthday parties you know first of all somebody yeah. starts off going the to laser quest bags. and then they're flying your children to la you know i mean <laughs> it, 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 I, i'm I, i'm pushing the envelope birthday parties you're going to <laughs> yeah but there are there are um it, it, there is that 
uh, catching up or trying to beat the Joneses or trying to be yes. the best parent or trying to, I don't know, you know, what what the, the reasoning is, but, but you know, it's like I said, the same with kids' parties. They just get bigger and bigger and you go, whoa, hang on a minute. Mm. This is, I can't compete. This is ridiculous. We're having mm. a couple of sandwiches and some Watsits on, on my, in my garden. You know, I can't I love compete. a Watsit. I love a Watsit. To be fair. To be if fair. you gave me Watsits, <laughs> I'm done. Especially the giant Watsits. They are oh, amazing. Yeah. But do you take my point that there is that chasing, the, you know, trying to beat the Joneses type thing? Yes, there is. Um, and I appreciate that. But I think... That is that is the anxiety you feel about that as a parent. Mm. I think is 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 an an internal anxiety really, um, and it's a completely understandable one. But the teacher isn't going. I now prefer so and so because <laughs> they gave me something very shiny. I, I really pre or I'm not anyway. Well, but you're I think not, in general, but some might. Well, mo I think most aren't. And the other reason for the cap, by the way, it isn't just a financial thing. You've got two questions. You've got the kind of potential bribery, which in practice never happens, but you need a system in place. The other thing is safeguarding, um, because forget about the parents. If a kid is giving a teacher excessively nice things you can have cases of infatuation and all kinds of stuff yeah, so yeah. you know it's there's an element of self-protection to it as well so if i was ever given something extremely valuable the first thing i would do is i would go to the deputy head and i'd go so and so has just given me this yeah because otherwise if it comes up that you have been given the porsche or the pony or the whatever <laughs> else it yeah. is and you turn up to work the next day in a new lamborghini and they go where did that come from and you go so and so you can get yourself in all kinds of trouble. Yeah. So it, it's it's the main as with everything in life, Petri, and everything we've talked about over the years. It's just about being sensible. Parents being sensible, schools being sensible, teachers being sensible. I think the homemade um, cupcake, the homemade fudge, or indeed nothing at all. A lovely card, even written on a piece of lined paper. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds very trite, but actually those words. The things that made me cry and made me emotional over the last 48 hours have been words. Um, it hasn't been items, to be yeah. honest. Well, that's because they didn't buy you anything expensive. But... <laughs> They clearly didn't think you were worth it. Oh, I, no. stop it. Well, why am I back here? <laughs> I'm joking. But, I mean, there's, there's rules here as well about accepting um, yeah. expensive gifts, um, which I never get offered. So <laughs> I never have to well, worry. Well, I, I, I could return fire now, Petri, but I won't. I shall, I shall simply do my talking on the pitch. It's all done. It's so, I know what you're thinking, so I know what you're saying. Um, listen, oh, it's such a pleasure to see you. Have a wonderful Christmas, won't you? And, let, and come you. on to my later show. Um, at some time. I know it's difficult for you, but I'd love to see you there as well. Thank you. Uh, Johnny Burrow there, teacher and broadcaster, brilliant broadcaster. He, sh he should give up teaching and, and go back to broadcasting, in my view. I've always been a huge fan. Um, but um, what do you think about buying teachers' presents? Have you been pushed into buying gifts for your kids' teachers? Do you think that it is unfair? Have you seen the kind of, I don't know, race to the top? I, it used to drive me absolutely nuts. You know, you see kids going in with big Champneys bags with dressing gowns in them and, and, and day trips. to. I mean, it was just like, was I a bit jealous? Yeah, of course I was. Um, but I also thought that it was pretty unseemly. So uh, have you ever had that? situation are you going through that now thinking oh god the teacher gift tip the teacher gift oh my god what am i going to do cupcakes that's the answer and even if you drop them on the floor which is i think what my son did with his they seem grateful uh, give me a call uh oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand i wonder if she ate them Anyway, she's still alive, so it can't be that bad. Uh, let's go to the calls now. And uh, Lawrence is in Essex about the male contraceptive pill. Uh, Lawrence, good morning. Would you take the pill? No, 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 I, I wouldn't, no. Why? Um, well, I'd love to look at the study on it first, see what the stats say about it. What's the side effects of it? Do we know that? Um, they're not. They're, there's no testosterone side effects. The the, the old uh, male contraceptive pill did have side effects in you know sort of loss of uh, libido and things like that. But this one doesn't doesn't have that because it's not a hormonally based um, uh, pill. Uh, the the drug that can safely and temporarily block male fertility. Uh, it's been given to mice. 
You'd be happy to know. <laughs> uh, uh, it was 99% effective in mice in preventing pregnancies. In monkeys, uh, oh, yeah. it, de it decreased sperm counts after two weeks. Um, and all the effects were reversed when the treatment was ended. So if it's good enough for mice and monkeys, mate, it's good enough for you. <laughs> Well, you know what they say about mice, but I'm not allowed to say that on the no, radio. No, really not. Sort of, <laughs> you know, I, I just, a uh, big, 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 big question mark. You know what a lot of these blokes are like out there? They're just decent chaps. Of course there are, but there's a lot of rats out there. Don't worry, I'm on the pill. I, th I do think that is the problem. I do, yeah. genuinely, and I'm not saying that I... I mean, I am a big fan of men. I love men. Uh, I think they're great. But, uh, you know, I, I even I even have one that's, that's my son. I love him. He's a brilliant bloke. But I do... I would have an issue with trust. Exactly. But a friend of mine, of a friend, he had the snip, and he used to carry around his certificate with him... <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I absolutely, you'd have to barcode scan it, though, to make sure it wasn't a, fr a fake, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, Lawrence, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, another man, not a woman, another man ringing in to say that men can't be trusted. Uh, give me a call. Listen, stay where you are because there's so many more conversations to come. This is Talk TV. Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished and fiery debate? Then join us for Crosstalk. One o'clock every weekday. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The COVID inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walked into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <No>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interviews. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They've that won. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that.
Just when I was getting used to my show, What Just Happened, being on Talk TV every Friday night at 10.30, they go and change it. I'm furious. They've moved it to 8.30 every Friday. Talk TV, What Just Happened. I am furious. Hi, good morning to you. It's Petri here with you through until... Uh, one o'clock this afternoon, um, and we've got so many conversations going. Sorry, I'm slightly out of breath, so I just had to run and then come back. Um, but we've got lots of conversations going on this morning. One of them is about Ukraine and whether it is time that we're all in or all out. This is after the uh, that uh, Orban of uh, Hungary has said that he's not happy about another 50 billion euros going to Ukraine at the same time. There's been questions over America continuing to fund the efforts in Ukraine. Um, how do you feel about it? Do you think it is time that we stopped funding the efforts in Ukraine? Orban says it's just prolonging the inevitable, that they're going to lose. Um, or do you think that we mustn't let Putin win at any cost? So we're talking about that this morning. Do give me a call. 0344 499 1000. The other conversation we've been having is about the male contraceptive pill. Uh, and it's been really interesting so far because British men are the first in the world to test this uh, this new pill, which works differently to the old types of pills that they've tried to use with men. Um, and it's been men phoning in and saying, we can't be trusted. We can't be, we're going to lie. We're going to tell you we're on the pill and we won't be. So that's men calling, but I have asked for women as well. How do you feel? Would you trust a man to take the pill? Um, I think there's a very good reason that the drug companies <laughs> haven't invested hugely in this line because I don't think there's a market there. I'm not sure men will t want to take it or will trust it, but there you go. That's just my view. Give me a call, let me know yours. 0344 499 1000. I will be taking your calls all the way through uh, this programme. It is your opportunity to talk back, so please do take it. Uh, right though, talking of pills and uh, and medicines, there's a huge issue going on at the moment. Experts are warning of a deadly synthetic opioid that has been traced to an illicit prescription drug um, uh, and people are now dying of this. So this is a synthetic opioid which is 10 times stronger than a drug you may have heard of called fentanyl. Now fentanyl, there's a huge fentanyl crisis in the United States of America. It creates that sort of, have you seen the images of the sort of zombies standing on the streets? That's that's the, um, the, the fentanyl drug. This is 10 times more powerful. It is also a great deal cheaper. You can get one of these pills for 10p and they are deadly. And in fact, they've already been attributed to at least 59 deaths in this country in the last year. So it doesn't sound like much, but this is growing. And also because it's so cheap, it's being cut with other drugs because the, the uh, heroin production is being stifled from Afghanistan. Um, the uh, Taliban have now banned uh, the production of poppies and, and uh, making heroin. So drug buyers are now, pushers, are now looking for a cheaper alternative. They found one and they are now cutting it with all sorts of other drugs, which is leading to deaths and major issues. Well, to discuss this uh, benzo crisis is Dr. Mohammed Mohammed Al Saadi, um, consultant uh, psychiatrist and clinical lead of Turning Point. Doctor, thank you so much. Good morning. Thank, thank you. you so much for coming. In. It's a real pleasure to have you in the studio. Thank you for having me. It's it, this is a, a a really interesting time in terms of drug illicit illegal drugs being crossed with. Uh, pseudo pharmaceutical drugs uh, and being being mixed together, yes. uh, and and this really cheap, cheap, cheap drug, which is a killer. It is. I mean, we have many deaths in London, which is unfortunate because people are not aware of the seriousness of this substance. So the shortage of heroin, as you mentioned, yeah. made people or drug dealers mix small amount of heroin with a bigger amount of fentanyl, which is powerful opioid. And even people who are smoking it, they usually go, in, they go into respiratory depression and they die. 
So we have alerted all our clients who are already in addiction services to say, look, you have to be careful not to buy any heroin from the street, please try not to use, because all contaminated with this fatal substance, which is fentanyl. And the other problem is that people, they order online. And I know someone who ordered online, took the tablet, and he went into a seizure. They've been investigating him for two months in hospital. They don't know. And when he woke up, he said, I ordered this tablet, and we found out it's fentanyl. So uh, since the pandemic, we have lots of people who have, um, I would say, health anxiety, and they self-medicate with anything Ah. without knowing these consequences. And that's why we're trying to educate people and make them aware of using anything to self-medicate is a huge problem. You you do have an issue, though, with drug takers, uh, drug addicts, that, um, that they don't care. Right, you can say to an addict, look, this, this, this synthetic drug is ten times more powerful than fentanyl. Um, the drug pushers don't, necess- don't, care, they don't give a damn about you, right? No, they Although they will always say, well, a dead addict is someone who can't buy more drugs, but they don't care. Because yeah. um, they'll always find another person. You, you've got addicts who will take handfuls of pills a day and they don't care if they end up dead from taking them. And that, that is a major uh, problem when you're saying to somebody, don't buy heroin off the streets. It's it like, is. where else am well, I going to get yeah, it? What should I do? <laughs> what should I do? Yeah, but, I mean, uh, I think we have to be really uh, gentle in our message to those people because they are stuck. I wouldn't mm. say they are they are victims of addiction. So yeah, the absolutely. nature nature of addiction make people desperate or risk takers. So they take risk. They care about themselves. They care about their families, but they're desperate. So I think the message to them from the family, from us, look, You need to take care of yourself with medical advice. You need to come for help. You need to come for support. We know you have addiction problem, and it's a huge problem. I mean, I would say addiction problem is the most difficult problem in psychology, psychiatry, in all field of medicine. Because when people take the substances, they are different. They change. They become risk takers. They become. They have a feeling of being immortal. I can take two bottles of whiskey. I can drink so much, and that false feeling led the uh, the, mm. the serious consequence and they could die easily but they don't know until they die <laughs> and you cannot tell uh, them. I mean, absolutely. I mean I, 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 I'm very open about this that I have a younger brother who is uh, who's uh, got a real issue with uh, with alcohol and in fact he's now got early onset dementia because of his alcohol yes um, uh, consumption um, so you, you, when you live with or close to an addict you, you, there reaches a point where you realise that nothing you you can do or say is going to make change. Make a change. Yeah, I mean, that's when we make people aware. Don't become hopeless about them. And even people who are addicted, don't become hopeless about yourself. Because some people, they say, my mum, father, everyone drinking, I'm drinking. I think I'm destined to be alcohol dependent mm. like my... And I say, no, this is hopelessness. Yes, genetic, true. Environment, true. But you can. You can treat yourself and you be out of addiction. Addiction is a serious problem, but people need to focus on treatment. Some people, they come, they say, it's fine, I will be fine, it's a behavior, and now we started to say addiction is a disease, so that people, they give good attention to the matter. But we do, we do have a, 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 when we talk about addiction and drug addiction, it's it's very easy to concentrate on the illegal and the illicit drugs. But, but we also know that people... Uh, Matt Perry from Friends, OK, he had a lifetime of addiction. Uh, he died at the age of 54. His, uh, the, the, the coroner has just ruled that it was uh, ketamine that was found in his body. And although he was using ketamine with a psychiatrist um, to help with his anxiety, the, the sense is that that would have been out of his system by the time he, he died. Mm. Uh, heart problems as well brought on by years of addiction and smoking. These are pharmaceutical drugs that he got addicted to. He, he had an accident. He hurt himself. Um, and uh, was it Vicodin, I think, he started taking? Mm. So we've got a situation where these, these pharmaceutical drugs are so powerful now. Uh, the whole fentanyl shambles and crisis and, and disgrace around pushing those opioids. You've got people listening and watching this who are addicted to an opioid. Um, I do phone-ins on it all the time, the -the over-the-counter addiction. Yes. 
what do we do about that? Because somebody's going, well, I got this from a doctor, so it must be OK. Yeah, I think we are trying our best uh, working with GPs because GPs are the first line of, of, mm. of prescribing. I mean, fentanyl, for example, is very useful. We use it in hospital, we use it in intensive care, no problem. But when people get it, they are naive to opioid or naive to opiates. If they take it, they will have very bad side effects. It is not for mild pain, it's mm. for severe pain. And people, they use it recreationally, it's a problem. So. Similarly, there are lots of painkillers, prescribed medication, people get used to it or get addicted to it, like oxycodone, like morphine, yeah. like pethidine, and that addiction, I mean, every doctor is aware of it. So GPs, they are vigilant, but the problem is people, they don't tell when they become more dependent, more addicted. When do you know them? When they come back, I lost my prescription, I lost my medication, it means they are taking more than usual and they're short of medication. Yeah. We are aware of the addiction to prescribed medication but it's very hard to manage however I think in the medical community our training is very strict about how much you discuss with people the addictive nature of H medication benzodiazepine for example very good for anxiety you need to be given properly mm. reduced properly therapeutically and wean the people off but some people I want my diazepam I want my Xanax I, so we have to manage that properly from the beginning from later. the beginning but then then you've got the the, the counter to that is that that there are so many people living in pain yes. who are saying that the doctors won't help me because it could be addictive. They won't give me what I need because I could get addicted, but I can't get out of bed. I don't have a life. Yes. Uh, so there's, there is a there is a balance to saying to somebody, no, either way, you're, gonna, you're not going to have a life. So yes. either way, you're going to stay in bed in pain yes. or you're going to be hooked on these pills. Yes. So we advise people not to self-medicate with anything. I mean, the most common self-medication is alcohol and benzodiazepine and codeine from over-the-counter. Mm. They buy solpodine or something. Mm. It's better to see your GP, push for pain clinic, see pain clinic, get proper treatment. Yeah, good luck. In the papers today, it was saying it's going to take a month to get a, a GP's appointment. Yeah, so. very sad. I mean, the NHS is very busy. GPs mm. are very busy. We are trying our best. It is not easy, but people need to take some responsibility in seeking proper help mm. rather than putting themselves at risk. You've also got a situation where uh, in in Scotland, we know, has got the most drug deaths in Europe. Yes. Right. It, it's extraordinary to me it that is. that's happening just just uh, uh, across across the border, if you like, into Scotland. But, but there again, the, the, the drugs that they're taking are uh, something called pregabalin, um, and it, it Taking it as in pill form, yes. I don't think does give you a high, but they've found a way of taking it, and I'm not going to say what that is, yes. in order for them to, to get that yes. high. Yeah. So sometimes it's not the drug's fault. It, it's no. the way human beings will find a way of going, well, it doesn't, it doesn't give me a high that way, so I'm going to try it that way. Yes, but that's the point. The point started be that... I think we started a few years ago to give pregabalin for anxiety and mm. then we said to all psychiatrists, please stop. Pregabalin is addictive, people they get high on it and they take more and more and they get stuck because they come to me in addiction service, they are addicted to pregabalin. But again pregabalin. it's used for pain, isn't it? Pregabalin. Yes, no, it, is, yeah, it is for pain and some GPs they give it for pain but we ask GPs not to follow that, you know, in the algorithm of pain management, don't put pregabalin earlier give okay. something uh, conventional like Panadol, paracetamol, all these things before you reach codeine and pregabalin because they are addictive. And we have got lots of people addicted to it. Yeah. So we say to people, look, pregabalin is a problem. We need to reduce it gradually and stop it. And where do we go for help if we've found ourselves prescribed and now hooked? Uh, I think the GP is the best point of contact and the GP will refer to our services. We deal with drug and alcohol and all prescribed medication and we are happy to receive GPs referrals and we are receiving every day and people who are hooked on benzodiazepine, on tramadol, on alcohol and but the most damaging I would say alcohol and cannabis which is a huge problem now yeah. because people switching sometimes yeah I'm not taking heroin and cocaine I'm taking cannabis cannabis is lovely and cannabis is very damaging
Yes, and uh, so the, the organisation is a turning point. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mohammed Al Saidi, a consultant psychiatrist and clinical lead at Turning Point. And uh, thank you, real pleasure for you to come in. And uh, if you are in any way um, uh, affected by anything that we've mentioned or you're seeking help, you're looking for, for an answer, of course there is Turning Point, but also please visit uh, talk.tv uh, forward slash helpline. So talk.tv. Uh, forward slash helplines. Uh, stay where you are. Be back in just a moment. We're here. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on Talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast ah, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm just, I'm just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are Listen you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. Hi, good morning to you. It's Petri here. I want to know if you've got a talented dog. Uh, I've got a very, uh, very good reason for asking that, um, because I haven't. Uh, he, uh, in fact, all the way through the last interview, I do apologise if you heard him snoring, because he's sitting at my feet uh, at the moment, sound asleep, and it's a judgement, I always find. I always feel judged when he snores while I'm working. Um, but um, we're going to be talking about talented dogs. It's, there's a, a great story in one of the papers uh, talking about how uh, there are such things as talented dogs, that they, they're a clever, you know, we all know, we all think, I know, I know mine isn't, bless him. Um, but he, he's very talented at being cute, and I'll, I, will, I will be... Uh, showing he's going to be sitting on the on the desk in the next uh, half an hour so do stay where you are if you want to meet my dog um, and I want to hear if your dog has any talent proper talent proper I mean I've got a friend of mine whose dog is so naughty but Bosley he's called the dog and he is but he is quite talented 
He can play dead. He can, do, you know, do all that. Do a, a, a spin. He's he's a, he's quite clever. So I want to hear if your dog has got any talents. Maybe you've taught them something. Maybe you taught them to dance. Maybe you've taught them to, I don't know, sing. Can they say sausages? That was always a bit dubious, wasn't it? Do you remember that? Oh, the dog that can say sausages. No, it's not. Ah, uh, sausages. Uh, so anyway, that was a talent. So let me know if your dog has got any talent uh, at all. Um, I'll show you the one trick that he does know, but he probably won't do it uh, in front of the camera. But anyway, we're going to be talking about that in just a moment. Uh, so, um, before that, I thought it was a good opportunity to look at some weird news. Because there's always weird news, and it never makes the front pages, and it never, it, it very rarely gets discussed on TV shows. So, uh, I want to do weird news, and Frank Lohman joins me now, who's a singer, actor and painter. Um, good morning, Frank. Morning, Petri. Um... I have a cat that snores and does trick. Does that help? It does help. It does help. I have a cat as well <laughs> who is... Her, her one brilliance is being evil. Uh, so oh. uh, she's great at evil. Uh, I mean, dirty looks, evil. She'll, <laughs> she'll run up and just smack me around the back of the head for no reason and then run off again. So that... that I that, mean, I have... I have both of them. Oh. There is There is one of them very grumpy wow. I've, I've both of them lying next to me <laughs> and um they're both very happy I bet they <laughs> and not are. snoring for once <laughs> yeah. no, he only snores when i'm on air it's very embarrassing oh yeah of course <laughs> of course yeah um right frank you've got some weird news for i saw this story actually i yeah. thought it was the cutest thing this first story oh this is this is so cute i mean you know kind of speaking of cats i mean you know that a cat likes to climb a Christmas tree, right? Yeah, that's why I don't have one. And so, um, rather than a cat in a Christmas tree, a family in Kentucky found an owl living in their Christmas tree. I mean, this raises, for me, it raises several questions. I'm like, how did they manage to get the tree inside the house without noticing the owl? Yeah. You know, kind of, was the owl asleep the whole time? I mean, you know, kind of, is it... I have no, I have no idea how they could have missed the owl because, like I said, you're going to, if you have a cat uh, in a Christmas tree, you know, you notice you that know, pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah, <laughs> you will. But this you is will a little know. baby owl that they didn't know was there. So they, cute. They, they decorated the tree, and you can see it's had a lot of decoration on it. It's a very lovely tree. Yes. And they didn't notice the owl for what four days. Yes, and that's what puzzles <laughs> me the most. I'm like, how do you? Hang on a second. Or because I mean, the owl wakes up. At some point, maybe they just didn't notice because the owl was awake at night while they were all asleep. Oh, m maybe. Uh, well, That's uh, my one, only guess. One of my team has just said, what a twit. Which I thought was very funny. <laughs> you should have come up with that line. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm not that quick Damn at this it, me time either. God. <laughs> I'm, an, I'm a night owl, uh, so I, I'm very, Same very... Yeah, Same here. Yeah, so we, we don't function at this time of day. Oh, um, God, no, I don't see peep. I mean, pun intended. Yeah. I don't see peep normally until at least midday. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. I'm totally with you on that. So the, 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 they spotted the, the owl when they started to see yes. the branches m move. But <laughs> what, I mean, what a lovely surprise, though, this gorgeous little I owl. Know. I know, I know. It's so, it's so cute. I guess by now they would have um, called a wildlife expert they because I'm sure done, yeah. they they would have been they they would have been very upset had um, the owl found any mice to hunt Ooh. indoors. Yeah. So that would have been another surprise. But what a cutie! Um, I mean, that is such. I know a she's sweet. For, I mean, he, I don't know, but it's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely, it really absolutely is. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, my, have a really... my, my cat would have had that dead and skinned within three seconds. I'm telling you that. She's, like I said, evil. Fritz, Fritz <laughs> whom I showed you, Fritz would have done the same thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they do... Outside that window, there are pigeons, and my, my cats are going mental when they see a pigeon. So They're I have no doubt that Fritz was happily... Unspeakably ruthless. Uh, cats are. Um, uh, so, Speaking right. of ruthless. Yeah, tell me about this. I want to wear a hat on Christmas I mean, Day. Oh God! I mean, you know, Christmas can be um, Christmas can be an interesting time for a lot of people. You know, kind of, and I think more divorces so far um, have been caused by various behaviours over over Christmas. And um, so this lady kind of, and she's and, and she's already setting setting the scene because. Um, 
she accused her mother-in-law to, to take away focus from her during the wedding. So that's a bad start for Christmas to begin yeah. with. And she basically, um, she basically says, well, I'm going to, you know, kind of my, my husband loves it when I wear hats. And so um, even if this is going to ruin my marriage, I'm going to wear a hat uh, on Christmas Day. Now. <laughs> what, not, not just a paper no. crown. We're talking about a full-on hat. She wants to, because she says so, um, for instance, um, on a bad hair day, she wore a black leather cap and, and her husband adored that. And apparently it looks like her, her mother-in-law hates it. So, 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 I mean, you know, it's, I wonder if, you know, kind of she should have thought about, you know, there's a whole mother-in-law thing I do not want to get into. And kind of, I'm happily single and I was in relationships and the mother-in-laws used to be the biggest issue of most of them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, that, that's it's when not you, all of them. They're the ones you try to win over, uh, aren't they? They're the ones, because, yeah. you know, I, I, I have a son and um, luckily... This girlfriend, I love her. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I, I'm the great potential mother-in-law. In fact, I keep saying, look, marry her or I will. Uh, you know, she's, she's, <laughs> she's, 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 she's incredible. She's lovely. So, um, you've, so you've bought a hat yet? Have you, have you <laughs> no. bought a hat? Oh, no, it's not going to be for a while. They're, you know, they're, okay. only, they're only in their 20s. But, you know, uh, I, luckily I like this one, but the last one I could not stand. And I was always like, get rid of her get rid of her so i know <laughs> i know how uh, potential mother-in-laws can be we know we know you, you made sure you made sure that your son every time he was looking at that girlfriend had this whisper in his ear kind of get rid of her yeah get rid <laughs> um she she was an absolute princess we don't we don't deal with people like that uh, no um, we don't like that i also think uh, i was saying today there was um uh, somebody wearing a, a a hat and i'm very distracted because again one of my team's wearing a hat i just think they look ridiculous christmas hats they look stupid oh they do whether, whether they're paper whether they are yeah i mean stupid. there are some weird things and you know, again if you see on television as well you know kind of depending on you kind of what yeah. you're watching but but, but it is just people I mean, I try and avoid going into town at this time of year. Yeah, yeah. I, I, try I pretty avoid much people. value my sanity. <laughs> <laughs> I value my sanity. Yeah. And, you know, often I find myself just setting one foot and just the one on Oxford Street. And I'm like, first of all, why? Second of all, I become a people disliker. Oh, my God. Very, very quickly. Yeah. Very, very quickly. I, especially I, I went out last years. night. I never go out on a Friday night. And um, I went out last yeah. night onto the to the King's Road um, to meet up with some Ooh. some pals for dinner, and it was so Christmassy it made me want to throw up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not my. I don't blame you. I'm exactly. <laughs> I'm exactly the same. And people are I'm just not a Christmas revolting. Grinch. No, no. I, I know. I, I know. am a Grinch. They, they stop behaving. You know, kind of. They stop behaving. You know, kind of. Isn't Christmas all about love and uh, this whole thing? You know, yeah. kind of. And if I you know, believe into that. But um, it's such a shame because I think you know, kind of Christmas should be about getting friends together, cooking. I mean, you, know, kind of, you should be stuffed by the end of the night. You, yeah, you yeah. should be stuffed exactly. galore by the end of the yeah. night. But that's about it. You know, kind of stop doing this whole you know, kind of madness on gift giving and just focus on what's really important. Rather buy a homeless person something. I agree. Kind of, I, agree. And, I and always do kind of, every year. You know, I, but every year I do. Yeah, so I do pay I. into Centrepoint and, uh, and homeless charities. Yeah. Um, We've got to talk about this. Uh, I love the Australians. I love their language as well. They do make me laugh. Um, but the Christmas crackers, um, as we know, we all we all yes. use Christmas crackers. But they have a very strange, na different name in Australia. What are they called? It's interesting because um, so they call them bonbons. 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 Yeah. Right, okay. Bonbons. So it's here. My German heritage really helps okay. because. We call sweets bonbons, bonbons as well. Yeah. Yeah. And they look like, because they look like, in you know, a kind of in this wrapper, and kind of you pull on both sides, they look like a bonbon. So kind of that kind of, so when I read this, I thought like, oh, that is, that may actually make sense. It does actually. For once. Yeah. For once. I mean, you know, I, kind of, I what, first thought you said bomb bombs, which, <laughs> no, but also makes sense when they, because they explode, don't they? They crack. They, yeah, 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 that so would make it sense. Works yeah. both ways. Absolutely, it yeah. works both ways. No, no, they call them bonbons, which is which kind of which kind of makes sense. But I mean, you know, that's by far not the weirdest, you know, kind of thing Australians call things. I mean, what do they call flip flops? It's something really weird. It's something thongs. Oh, I can't remember 
thong. What? It's a thong. Yes. Oh, yeah, see, and that gets confusing, you know, kind of when you say yeah, to someone, guess, can you take yeah, off your thong? Yeah. I've just taken my thongs off. Totally oh, different God, conversation <laughs> in Australia. Totally that different. That is, I mean, different that is... <laughs> that's a totally... Di- that's going a completely different direction. Oh, um, yeah. Whether um, you want to or not. Whether you want it to or not, you've started something. Um, this, I saw this story as well and I thought, yeah. how is this a story? How is this a thing? Um, Tesco. Yeah, so it's a, it's a story because... Um, uh, you know, and I was worried, you know, kind of whether we end uh, end on something really disgusting. But hey, you know, kind of hey, hey why not? Um, you know, first of all, from now on, I make my stuff. I mean, I have for most of the years. So I make my stuffing myself. You know, kind of so so. And now I definitely will. So basically, um, Tesco re- uh, is recalling a certain brand of Christmas stuffing mix because drum roll, it may contain moths. How? How does it contain I, moths? I, I mean, don't and know. And how did they find the old... out that it contained moths? This is a batch of Tesco finest apple and cranberry stuffing yes. mix. So if you do have some of that, uh, it is being recalled. Um, it's 130 it grams. Before date. Yeah, it has to have a best before date of September 2024. 2024. Yeah, that's how they recognise the the batch, and then um, yeah, you can take it back to Tesco. So you don't need a receipt. But I'm just like, how do how do moths get into? But then on the other hand, you know, kind of they can get, maybe they get in there as as larvae and then hatch. I mean, I don't know. I but are we talking a... the little moths that like cashmere, or? The, the big moth that, that Probably, hold me in my sleep. No, 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 no. I think we're talking, you know, kind of the kind of cloth eating moth, you know, kind of that kind of variety. Because I'm sure they must be small. You kind of, I don't think they can be um, the it? massive varieties. So, so it, but they're tiny, right? So if it was in the stuffing, you wouldn't see them. I, I, I mean, you, you just no. And no, you wouldn't, unless they hatched and you know, kind of by accident, one flew out. But I have no <laughs> idea how they would survive in a, you know, kind of in a vacuum pack. So kind of, you know, kind of, it's, it, it puzzles me. It really would just. But you know, strange things happen. You know, kind of. I once had a. Um, I was living in Vienna at the time, and it was winter. Um, I bought a broccoli and I uh, put the broccoli in the fridge. And the next day, inside my fridge door sits a butterfly. And I oh, <laughs> so looked at the broccoli came from Spain. So I was like, okay, but butterfly must have travelled as a pupae in oh, to possibly. and hatched in my fridge. And so um, I took it out, christened it Jose because it came from Spain, and because it was winter, obviously I couldn't put it outside. So I so I fed the butterfly kind of a mixture of fruit tree and sugar water. And um, Jose lived with me for two weeks, and then sadly Jose died. But, but but yeah, I I had a butterfly. That's so cute. I, used to, I, I used had to a keep butterfly flies for two as weeks. a pet when I was a kid. Um, yeah, I used to have a fly in a box that was my friend. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have a cat that eats flies. I mean, that is usually you know my I'm, friend I, I never a fly. To, yeah. You know, I never have to worry about spiders or, or, or anything again because literally by the time I see them, Fritz has already eaten them. Yeah, they've so. already they've already got legs missing and, and, and all sorts of things. But I, I, I'm so oh. I'm so interested in this story because it's, it raises more questions than answers, doesn't it? it? You know, first of all, how did the moths get in there? Second of all, how yeah. did somebody how did somebody discover uh, they were in there? Um, and, it's really interesting because. It says it doesn't say it anywhere. So, so I'm, I'm, I don't, I really don't know. Um, because all they've, all they are saying is um, that you know, kind of the food standards agency obviously said you know, kind of anyone who's bought this shouldn't buy it. Which, yeah, I uh, shouldn't eat it. I mean, it kind of that makes sense. Um, but later but batches no one... are safe. The Tesco is saying it's only that batch. Um, the yeah. best before date September 2024. So check your best before date. It's 2024. I, I, I the other thing is I'm it surprised the cranberries? about. Yeah, possibly in the in the fruit. Yeah. But I, yeah. I, I'm also not convinced that moths would be that poisonous. Are they? I mean, I don't no, want to eat. I don't it's... want to eat one. I've never wanted no. to eat one. I've been I mean, honest with I'm you. not knowingly want to eat no, one. No, I never. Kind of, I'm, I'm like, can you kind of? No. It's well, you know, insects are 
could be the protein of the future. So, you know, kind of, it's... Um, they should be marketing this. Time, added it, protein. <laughs> absolutely. I totally agree. You know, kind of, use it as an opportunity. You know, kind of, if you've been inclined to do so, you know, kind of, it comes with, these come with added, very special protein. Yeah, non-vegan. I mean, that's all you've got to put yes, on it. Definitely. It's, it's, Most definitely, you need to say yeah, non-vegan. You need to say non-vegan. <laughs> uh, this is not vegetarian. It's got moths. <laughs> moths. It's in it. in it. I mean, you know, kind of, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's bizarre, but, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, like I said, I find it really strange that there is no mentioning of how do, how did they discover? How did they these, discover you know, it? Of, and, I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, it's puzzling, yeah. Puzzles me. I mean, you know, it's, it's a classic, you know, kind of, they don't want to be sued, and I think, you know, kind of, that's why it's easier to, 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 to kind of take, take them off the shelves, you know, kind of, but, but, but I think, you know, kind of, you're right, you know, kind of, anyone unknowingly eating those will probably be perfectly fine. I mean, it really... Unless I, it's a very think, poisonous yeah, Christmas unless moth. Unless it's um, a really special poisonous <laughs> moth. Uh, so let me just uh, let people know again, this is Tesco Finest Apple and Cranberry yes. and Moth stuffing mix. And Moth, And yes. Moth. Uh, it's a 130 gram packet and the stuffing batch has a best before date of September 2024. Uh, you can return the That's package the to Tesco without a receipt, so you don't a need a receipt. receipt necessary, yeah. Yeah, uh, for a full refund. Uh, so go and check <laughs> go and check your stuffing. Go and check the <laughs> sell-by date of your stuffing. <laughs> go and go and after that, yeah. make it yourself. <laughs> just make your own stuffing. Or just buy the stuffing from a different date uh you know that, that's <laughs> if you still feel inclined to do so i wouldn't i mean again, no. if, I, if, if i'm really honest again, if i wouldn't go i wouldn't go near it but hey you know but again, hey you know i mean me. you know it does just, just so nice apple and cranberry anyway i just want to let you know yeah. that carol and greg have just uh messaged me and they're saying we love frank um you must have him and his weird stories again so there you go Anytime. There you Anytime. go. Anytime. Love to. I'd love to love chat to. with you again. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, great, great stuff pleasure. there. Thank you, Frank. Happy Christmas to you. Happy Christmas, Petri. Uh, Happy Christmas. Frank Lohman there, a singer, actor and painter. I'd love to see some of his paintings, actually, because I paint too. Um, so, um, thank you, Frank. That was absolutely brilliant. And thank you, Carol and Greg. Uh, as well. And another one from Ian here says the moth or larvae were probably found in the mixing or packing machines after the batch had been processed. So that would have been, that would have been, what am I looking at? Uh, the, the moths may have got into the stuffing mix through one of the raw ingredients, uh, cranberries. Yeah, so Frank was right, it was probably the cranberries. Uh, cranberries grow in bogs not toilets, bogs, on the East Coast and have long... I love a cranberry, I have to say. But have I got to check them for moths now? What? Absolutely. I mean, how do you find out? But that, that is disgusting. If you... The machine that packages it, you then go, oh, look, there's moths there. Blah, disgusting. Anyway, uh, it's fine. Just take it back. You'll get your money back and it's fine. And any other batch is, of course, perfect. So don't worry about it. Anyway, it's time for me to take a quick break, but then we're going to find out if your dog or mine have got any talent. Stay where you are. We're here! Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. 
for the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideologies? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interviews. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They're that right. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. Hello. Uh, good morning to you. It's Petri here with Bailey. Here he is. He's wearing a matching uh, pink thing. Actually, this is quite cool. You've probably got one of these if you've got a dog. Um, can we see it? The, the light? There we go. Yeah. Flashing light. Disco, disco dog. Um, I won't put it on because there might be somebody who's affected by it. But uh, anyway, we're talking about gifted dogs. I think there's, there's only one trick and I, I wonder if he'll do it now is Bailey. <laughs> what could go wrong? Bailey, give mummy a kiss. Have you got a, I want that top. Give me a bummery kiss. Bailey. No, not my hand. Give me a kiss. There you go. So that's it. Uh, and that cost me a sausage uh, for that. So there he is. He is only gifted at looking cute and sitting on desks in studios. But uh, Denise Nuttall joins me now, who's founder of Paws in Hand. Oh, look, what's that? Is that you? Um, and she's here to join me now to talk, but she's a dog behaviour expert. So this is a story about um, dogs. Some scientists say that some dogs are even more special than their owners think they are, thanks to their talent for learning toy names. No, it's not you, is it? Um, and this message has come through saying, I have a chow chow who's stone deaf and he now knows sign language. That's absolutely brilliant. He um, uh, said he came to us after an awful life of beatings. Ramsey sniffed out my late husband's tumour in my husband's chest and he knows what time my daughter and grandson's due home and gets so excited. Um, so there you go. There's somebody with a talented dog. Another kiss? No. All right. Um, let's try that with your boyfriend as well. It doesn't work. Give me a kiss. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, Denise, hello. Good afternoon. Good morning to you. Hi, Petri. Nice to meet you. Uh, thank you. It's nice to meet you too. So I have a particularly untalented uh, dog. He's um, not the brightest spark in the box, but he is incredibly loyal, loving and cute. Uh -oh. There's different kinds of intelligence. So the acquisition of learning names of toys or words isn't really a dog thing because they don't speak. Yeah. So I think what the research is saying is it, it is particularly interesting that some dogs aren't able to learn language, but it isn't, in my opinion, the only sign of intelligence in a dog. It's, it, I, I've been told I've, that dogs do have a, a kind of language understanding of a two-year-old. That, that's, um, yeah, Stanley Crenn suggested that um, many years ago, and 
I would pretty much concur two, two and a half years old. You, you know, you can't rely on dogs to be able to make reasoned decisions. And if you treat them like a two and a half to three year old, yeah, then you're that, as safe. A, the toddler, um, because he does know um, work. He knows he's coming with me to work, so he, do, he does know that. He knows sausage. Do you know sausage? Do you want a sausage? Do you want a sausage? Are going to give me a kiss for a sausage? <laughs> um, so he knows that. And that, you know, and, and when I open the back door, um, you know, all of those things. But he's, he knows how to use the dog flap only going out. And then he sits by the back door and barks until I let him in. He, won't, he doesn't know, not the brightest, really. Dogs are very context specific, actually. When, whenever I do dog training classes, I say to people, whatever you're training in the village hall here, you have to train them everywhere because they don't generalize. So if you spend a lot of time teaching your dog to get out, um, to be able to use the toilet, we may not yeah. spend quite so much time teaching them the other way around. It, it doesn't mean automatically they can do it both ways. I mean, that, that's, it, that's really interesting because you are a bit... Mm. People call you thick, but I'm not. I'm. I'm not having yeah. thick. Um, not. To, to dogs as well, though. You know, there must be a range of intelligence in dogs. You would imagine, as there is in human beings. Well, yeah. I mean, that's why some. It, it, the, the term intelligence is a tricky one to use, really, because there are several kinds of intelligence. You've got the instinctive intelligence, that is, the skills that they inherit as a breed, so breed traits. Um, that's why you have border collies that herd. They're born with those skills, and they they don't really need. And training. they're incredibly empathetic as a breed. Border collies. I find they're very very intelligent, mm. very intelligent, and um, I I have an interest in intelligence and an interest in human learning as well. And I've often found when I'm working with dogs like border collies, they are supremely intelligent, but they're really super sensitive. They're often very noise sensitive. They're very sensitive to anything that moves, that's noisy. And I, I, I welcome one day when somebody actually does some research to identify if, if the Border Collies particularly, but not just Border Collies, other breeds, could be described as um, on the autistic spectrum. Oh, really? Asperger's type of um, autism, because some of them are super focused, super bright, but really sensitive. And some of them are quite socially uncomfortable as well. I do, I do feel that many dogs seem to portray traits that, that could be um, the equivalent of autism. I, I mean, I, I suppose that people who, who live with animals, you do get to know their level of, of intelligence. And he's now licking my hand. Does that mean you want us water? Um, that, that, that you do get to, to know their person. People who don't have animals don't get this. I think we're all mad. Um, oh, you're just, you know, animal fighting animals. You're making them human. But actually, they do have intelligence. And, 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 and my, my boy may not be able to... He can count to four. I promise you he can count to four. Um, and because um, he knows if I give him a, a treat, so I'll take a break of a sausage before I go to work into four pieces. And if I if I hide a, a, the third piece, he's like, no, 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 you haven't you haven't you haven't finished yet. You need to give me that, <laughs> that, that fourth piece. So um, and no one believes that, do they? Um, but it's it, we all have a different degree of relationship with our with our animals that we given their intelligence level. Yeah, I mean, if anyone suggests that that's not true, that he can count, it's scientifically proven, actually. The, the studies have been done to show that dogs are aware when they're expecting to see a certain number, it's not there, they look for the other one. Yeah. That, you know, and if you think about it, that's not unreasonable, because if you're a dog in the wild and you've found a food source, you're not going to lose sight of that. Yeah. You're going to make sure you come back to that. So I don't think these things are particularly surprising that they can do because dogs are descended from our domesticated dogs. Obviously, they're not quite the same, but they are descended from feral dogs. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, I, I love the fact that, that this is a judgment again from him. He's just stretched and sort of going to sleep now, bored, fed up with him. I think it's lovely that he's relaxed. <laughs> He's very relaxed. He's been around studios uh, quite a lot uh, in, in his life. She, she's a very well-behaved dog, but she'd be so interested in everything. She'd just be charging around, knocking things off. <laughs> oh, no, he can't be bothered. He, honestly, he's like, oh, another studio. What, what, oh, God, really? Um, but um, it, 
with people contacting me now and saying it, it, it's uh, incredible that animal intelligence is really an interesting area to go into, the different levels of intelligence, not just a breed intelligence. Yes, dogs are. It's like individuals or individual cats or individual whatever it might be. Um, and uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, dogs, uh, people contacting me saying that their dogs know when they're ill, not necessarily sniffing out cancers and things like that, although we know dogs are particularly good at that, but, but also knowing if you're ill, knowing if you're not feeling yourself or upset. So there are some dogs that display empathy um, and they can, you know, some, some studies that were done on that, we're looking at yawning because as humans, when one person yawns, the other person yawns, it's a sign of empathy. They've done the same experiment in dogs and they found that dogs will also yawn if you yawn. Um, not all dogs are empathetic though, you know, so it's the same as people, I think, you know, some of the issues that we have with people are the same ones we can have in dogs. But one of my favourite, favourite studies that was along the lines of this research that's just been produced was a dog called Rico. Um, my supervisor, Dr. Julian Kaminsky, did this study and she found that Rico understood more than 200 words for toys. Wow. But the interesting bit was when you then introduced a toy that hadn't been named, he could use judgment or the, what they call fast mapping to figure out, well, I don't know this name, so therefore it must be this one. So he oh. actually split the toy that he'd never been given the name for, which I think is particularly clever. That's very clever. No, because that, that, that implies rational thought process Absolutely. because recognition is one thing isn't it that's one form of intelligence sausage he knows what that is but if i if i said to him some fancy name for a, a sausage he wouldn't know what i was talking about so it's more recognition than understanding um but if you can start linking thoughts if a dog can start linking thoughts together um, I, I don't know if you saw that, that uh, I don't know what it was on, TikTok or something, where there was a dog who the, 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 the owner was, did that to them and said, choose, uh, you know, a biscuit. And yeah. so he chose the biscuit, he got one biscuit, and the dog took the biscuit. And then he opened his hand and he had, like, ten biscuits here. And the dog went... Oh, and, I don't, <laughs> and spat out the one biscuit and then <laughs> went... To, so that's, that implies a rational thought process, that is... Yeah. I don't want this one biscuit, I want that ten biscuits. And so th that's a different form of intelligence again. It is. Dogs are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. One of my favourite traits I've seen in dogs is deception. I love this um, because some dogs, it, this, you typically see this in a multi-dog household. You see one dog has got the favoured seat and another dog's been trying for a while to get this dog off the seat. And then what they'll do is they'll suddenly rush up at the front door barking the dog gets off the settee then to go and check out and then they go and nick their seat. No! It's very That's dog. brilliant. We, yeah. we should be under no illusion that, that these animals that we live with are really, really smart. Yeah. I mean, it, it, he, he gets up and tells the cat off if she's trying to scratch furniture because he's heard me shouting at her and say, get off, Edith. Um, and uh, so he'll go and, and potter over and and, and uh, make sure she's, she's got the message without being aggressive, because he's not at all. But um, he does understand that that annoys me. So he'll that's go really and do, do something yeah, about that's it. That's really clever. You see, that's why I say different kinds of intelligence. The ability to acquire an understanding of words mm. is a very specific thing in a species that don't use words to communicate. There are so many other forms of intelligence, such as being able to adapt to situations that they're living with, how they problem solve relationships, how, how they interact with different species and, and our different human moods and things, how they deal with those things, in my opinion, is a sign of real intelligence. Yeah, it, it's uh, the, the other thing that concerns me, though, is I'd like to spend five minutes in his head. I, I think it would be a holiday, because uh, I don't think there's much going on in there, but um to, to understand how how they think because he will often have uh, dreams uh, barking dreams where he's d chasing something and barking uh not in a worried way because i can tell the difference if he's if he's scared but um th th what that's obviously a thought process right a dream is a it must be a form of thinking yes because when we sleep Parts of the, the, the different cycles of sleep are responsible for solidifying memories. 
So there are some theories that during that process, we are reliving those experiences in our brain so that we can file that information. But that, that's, in, that's on human studies of, um, you know, dreaming. But I, I think the same might apply to dogs. I can't see why it wouldn't. Yeah, it, it, it's just, it, I know he definitely, he does dream. Um, but they're rubbish timekeepers, aren't they? They're rubbish at telling the time. Because if, if I leave the house uh, <coughs> to, to go to a, a shop for two minutes, He's as excited to see me as if I've been out <laughs> for five hours. It's like, oh my that's... God, you're back! It's like I'm, I I'm literally just a bit of timekeeping. I think it's to do with just being really happy to see you. Because mm. some studies have actually found dogs have been able to um, track time for around a month period. I think we have to take some um, provisos to this research. The so research done many years ago was looking at dogs in quarantine who receive visitors every month, you know, in the days when we used to have to quarantine. Yeah. quarantine. And what they found is that dogs' behaviour changed on the day of the expected arrival of their human. Now, wow. I'd like to have seen more details of that research because possibly what was happening was that the kennels were being extra careful about cleaning. They might have changed their routines, expecting their human to visit, and that might have given them a clue. But it's still quite clever that they would recognise those changes in routine. Yeah, apparently uh, when uh, when I'm out and I'm coming back, he will go to the door about half an hour before I'm due home. So he he, he does get a, an idea of when I... That is interesting, because I, I remember seeing something on um, a documentary once where a guy had said he believed his dog knew when he was coming back. So they actually had two researchers, one filmed in the home and one filmed the guy out. And they they, they measured the behaviours that the dog was displaying, and they they matched the times. Wow! With when the guy turned around and came back, and the minute the guy turned around to come back, the dog started to get active and started looking for him. And who knows how they knew this? Yeah. So don't believe it when people tell you your dog's thick. That's that, no, there's different thought. types different types of intelligence. Denise, thank you very much indeed. Fascinating. Uh, Denise Nuttall, there, founder of Paws in Hand. Now. I mean, I know that you normally have cat of the week, but you've got to accept that Bailey's dog of the week, haven't we? We've got to, we've got to go for that. Um, he's snoring again. Can you hear that? Uh, anyway, um, uh, let me know if your dog has got any talent whatsoever, because mine hasn't. Bless him. This is Talk TV. For the news that matters, for the opinions that matter, for the stories that matter, find me, Vanessa Feltz, every weekday at 4pm, only on Talk, on TV, on radio, online and on your smart speaker. We're here! Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV, on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about sport today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on Talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. 
Keith Sunak and the current Conservative government are not Conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideologies? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. So. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. Just when I was getting used to my show, What Just Happened, being on Talk TV every Friday night at 10.30, they go and change it. I'm furious. They've moved it to 8.30 every Friday. Talk TV, What Just Happened. I am furious! Hello, good afternoon. Uh, it's Petri here with you until 1 o'clock. Look, I'm really sorry for those of you... Um, who uh, were listening on radio and, of course, didn't see my dog. But he is the only thing I tweet um, because that's the least offensive thing I can think to do. So uh, he's a little black and white Shih Tzu, in case you were wondering. Um, Shih Tzu cross, we're not entirely sure with what. But um, that's that's what he looks like, a little bundle of, uh, of fluff. So I, I meant to say that, actually, while, while uh, he was uh, sitting on the desk because... I know it's annoying if you're on radio and you can't you can't see the images. A couple of you getting in touch about what your dog can do. Um, Petri, my dog bounces to hip hop music with a nodding head. I love that. That's from Wayne. Um, and uh, Don has said animal intelligence is a fascinating subject. We use dogs for all sorts of things, mainly due to their fantastic sense of smell. Plus, dogs make lovely companions. I tell you what, I wouldn't be able to cope without mine, honestly. He's amazing, and when I do bring him into work, the amount of joy that he brings to a lot of people, is, it's extraordinary, it just lifts morale, it really does boost people. He went wandering off, because we're on the same floor as uh, Virgin and Graham Norton. He, went, he, went wander, he goes wanders and says hello to people, and he wandered into, into Graham's control room, into Graham Norton's control room, which I don't know went down very well. Uh, with the, his team were fine, but I'm not sure Graham would see looking at me and going, what the hell is that woman doing in my control room? But anyway, he wanted to go and say hello to Graham Norton. And who blames him? Because he's brilliant on our sister station, Virgin. Um, now, don't forget that if you are listening to Talk Radio, uh, you can watch if you want. You would have seen Bailey. I mean, who doesn't want to see that? Uh, so don't forget you can watch this programme on television as well. You can find it on uh, Sky 522, Virgin 606, Freeview 237, FreeSat 217 uh, via YouTube or the Talk TV app. I think it's also on TikTok and things like that. So however you consume uh, your, your television, then uh, do so. We'd love to have you on board. Um, so I'm still taking your calls on uh, whether you have a talented pet um uh, or whether a talented dog mainly but if you've got a talented cat that'd be interesting as well uh, also we're still talking about ukraine um and it's time to go all in or all out and talking of all in or all out can i say that probably not the male contraceptive pill uh we're talking <laughs> talking about that was wrong wasn't it i'm getting it i'm getting like that. But anyway uh the male contraceptive pill <laughs> would you as a man take it and as a woman would you believe uh, a man who said he was taking got lots of calls on that as well so we'll get to those in just a moment i'm in big trouble uh, anyway uh, so all of that so your conversations your chance to talk back please do get in touch the number 03 now this was a fascinating story to me that i was reading about cults I don't know if you remember, if you're of a particular age, if you're sort of in your 50s, you'll remember that when you were in your 20s, there was an awful lot of talk about 
cult, about joining a cult, about being in a cult, about avoiding a cult, about making sure that you didn't fall foul to a cult. And you used to get uh, cult members, and I'm being very careful how I say this word, but cult members, you used to get them hanging around outside uh, train stations, bus stations, waiting for young people and, and scooping them up and making them cult members uh, that was then and i thought actually we've pretty much moved on from there but reading this article it's absolutely quite extraordinary about a guy who who has spent his life he was once in a cult but he spent his life getting people out of them uh, for people who want to get out of uh, of the cults and he said there are 2000 cults currently in the UK. I honestly thought we'd moved on from there. But I guess they've just moved on in a different way of recruiting cult members. And that's all about grooming. It's all about grooming. So I, this, I wanted to talk about this because it, it to me, I, I honestly thought uh, it's sort of gone. You know, we'd, we'd moved on from there, but no. Um, Joining me now is uh, Radia Glees, who's an ex-cult follower, an ex-cult member. Um, she spent 25 years in a cult. Um, and, and actually, she's in a, a, a Netflix documentary called How to Become a Cult Leader. Um, and she also features in an Amazon documentary called Holy Hell and joins me now, which I'm absolutely fascinated. She's joining me from Austin, oh. Texas. Um, Radia, thank you so much for, for joining me. Um, oh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, 25 years. Uh, tell me what, what it was like to be in a cult. How did you get into it, and what was it like when you were in it? Well, OK, so first of all, you know, I, I love to say this. You know, nobody, nobody joins a cult. You know, nobody wakes up one day and says, you know, I think I'm going to join a cult. Um, it, it it sort of happens. And with my particular group, it was a spiritual, uh, it was a spiritual community that evolved into a cult. And what typically happens, I think, when a group gets together, uh, if there's a leader, <clears throat> um, if usually leaders like that have narcissistic tendencies and as the group evolves so does the leader and so do, so does the narcissism so what turns out to be a cult um, starts out to be maybe a lovely experience that's how you you know it, it it's sort of like the frog in warm water mm. you know the next thing you know you start questioning and by the time you start questioning you're already deeply immersed which makes it a lot more difficult to get out it seems with many cults uh, radia that 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 women do particularly badly uh that that there is that there's that uh um, so the narcissistic tendency of the cult leaders, who tend to be men, uh, then very quickly turns to being quite abusive towards women and girls. Uh, is that commonplace across all cults, or is it just the ones that I've seen programs on? Well, in my particular situation, the cult leader was homosexual. So the girls were not abused. It was the men that were abused, which is rather unusual. Yeah. But with with any uh, narcissist, and and I will tell you, it doesn't matter whether it is, it's a religious cult, or a political cult, or a any kind of group think of any kind. Um, the leader who usually has narcissistic tendencies, as those narcissistic tendencies develop, then there's a certain pattern. That's what the Netflix series is about, how to become a cult leader. And it doesn't matter whether it's a Jim Jones or a Charlie Manson or with my particular leader, his name was Jaime Gomez. And 
make no mistake, and, and I was telling Carla yesterday, it's kind of weird that they put my episode, which is the third episode, between Charlie Manson and <laughs> Jim Jones. Um, because we were not at all that um, serious or dangerous, although, you know, there was abuse. You know, we weren't murdering and committing suicide, mm. which I was I was interviewed um, once or a couple times uh, where they actually were disappointed that there was no murder or suicide <laughs> in our group. Um, <clears throat> but what happens is, there's characteristics of a narcissist. That narcissist develops into a malignant narcissism, which develops into a sociopath. And so sexual abuse uh, is is part of the playbook. Um, and it's a form of control, is, of course. Rape well, and is most, a form, yeah. Yeah, it's the most intimate uh, of control. So usually you will always, you know, see that sexual abuse um, follow as the as the group develops because it's it's right out of the playbook, you know. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it's used in war as a control uh, mechanism and as a torture. And, and, and so it, 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 it makes sense in a horrific way that it would be used as a form of control within a, a cult environment. When did you when did you realize you know, that? It, 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 yeah. this was something other than what you first thought you were getting involved in? Well, that's a, you know, that's a long, long story. Um, and I wrote a book on it. Um, you know, I started to be really kind of disinterested in him or what he had to offer um, in about 1995, but I didn't leave until 2006. Wow. So I was really conflicted for about 11 years. And the reason why, there's a lot of reasons, but you know, being in a group, that becomes your family, that becomes your, your best friends mm. and you're sharing a common experience that you're not going to get on the outside. So it's not that easy to just say, okay, I'm not interested in you anymore because I have an entire culture that uh -huh. I know I'm going to leave. And when I do, you know, first of all, my family was dead, all except for my brother who disowned me. Um, so there was nothing on the outside for me to go to. And so for me to face the fact that if I go, I'm going to be isolated and demonized and it's going to be a rough road. And it was, um, I lost everything. So it's not that easy to just kind of go, oh, I'm disenchanted. I'm yeah. going to walk away. Is, your, is the cult that you left still in operation? Well, unfortunately, yes. Now, not in Austin. Um, we, and actually, I had a lot to do with bringing it down in Austin. Um, you know, I was an elder in the, in the group. And so when an elder suddenly decides to disappear or leave, yeah. especially when you've, when you're, you've got activities every single day, that you've been doing for 20 some odd years and suddenly you know, Roddy is gone, um, that makes a splash, you know, that's noticeable. Um, so the next thing that went on was the next elder who was close to me said, where did you go? And I said, you know, I started, I, I came to find out that there was sexual abuse happening with m my close friends. And so that was sort of my line in the sand. I was like, okay, I'm not going to tolerate this anymore. So when I left, then the next elder came to me and I told her what was going on. So she left and then the next elder came and they left. And so it was like a dominoes yeah. effect in Austin, man. It, it literally came down in about two weeks. Just, um, I mean, your, your, so, your book, uh, The Followers, uh, um, it, it goes in, like you said, it goes into details about how, how all of this happened. If you're, if, 
if you're a parent now or a friend of somebody who you think has got involved in a cult, is there anything that you can do or does it have to sort of be them that makes the decision? Well, yeah, good luck. I mean, it has to be them that makes that decision. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing, and, and it's an important factor to remember. Um, the family members need to not make it not make it about them don't take it personal like my brother disowned me basically mm -hmm. so i had no place to go and so the best recommendation i can do is to try now different cults try and isolate you from your family members from the outside etc so as you start to make contact try very very hard not to one have an opinion of what you think they're experiencing because you don't know mm. believe me and you're when you're in the group you're well programmed you're well programmed to believe that you are exceptional and that anyone on the outside doesn't know you doesn't understand you will never be to the level that you are at mm. right so, you know, when family members, it's kind of shocking to them to lose or to have the feeling that they've lost their family member. So the worst thing that they can do is hold that, harbor that kind of resentment or opinion. You know, you made a mistake or this is stupid yeah. or, you know, you don't know what you're doing or whatever, because you're already programmed. Oh, it's part of the grooming, believe. isn't it? It's grooming. Oh, very much so. And you're already programmed to believe that they don't know you, they don't understand mm. you, and they never will. So the more offensive they are, the less success you're going to have in making that connection. Just, just very quickly, because we're stuffing a lot into this, I'm aware of that, but it, the, the, the recruitment of cult members now, like I was just saying, in my youth, they were, they were hanging around outside tube stations and bus stations, right, looking for vulnerable young people. This must be online now, right? There, there must be a, a pathway now that is much more scary and much quicker. Right, right. And... And the concept of recruitment is, it's a variable within the group. It, it really depends on what the nature of the group is. Like, I never, I never was groomed to recruit, ever. As a matter of fact, our cult was very difficult to get into because the group leader, as he, as his narcissism developed, became more and more paranoid right so it was really difficult to get in and you, it was real exceptionalism right yeah right so i i never um in the beginning it wasn't a matter of recruitment in the beginning we were having so much fun that we were literally inviting our friends so wow. and, and i was in when he was he was not a guru at the time so there was only like when I first met him, there was only like four of us, yeah, right? right. And then then there was eight of us, and then there was sixteen of us, and then there was thirty two of us. You know that kind of thing. It grew sort of organically because we were enjoying whatever we were yeah, you know, experiencing. Course. Yeah. So we just we wow. just wanted, you know. And if you see the movie Holy Hell, Holy Hell is on Amazon, and this is a a documentary. Uh, Will Allen is the director. He's the filmmaker. He was in the group, and he was the videographer for the group. Um, he wasn't. He wasn't doing it thinking he'd ever be out. He was just taking. You know, he was a videographer. So we have thirty years of archival footage. I mean, I listen. So you, I, having spoken to you, I when I as soon as I get home this afternoon, I am watching both of those. I am absolutely fascinated in yeah. the whole psychology around this, um, and yeah. and I cannot wait to see it. Radia Aglis, thank you so much. I've been absolutely fascinating. The book is The Followers um, by uh, Radia Aglis, and the uh, programs. If you want to watch them, I'm 
definitely going to be having a look. Uh, the Netflix documentary, How to Become a Cult Leader, and also an Amazon documentary called Holy Hell, uh, which is going to have some really fascinating um, uh, images in there as well. Potentially 2,000 cults in this country right now. Uh, right, um, stay with me. We've still got male contraceptive to talk about. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about sport today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. The amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on Talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this is important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your this ideologies? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, I'm just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm I'm going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can't, can you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. Hello, good afternoon to you. It's Petri here with you until one o'clock. Johnny Gould, by the way, is stepping in at uh, one o'clock, taking you through to Trisha. Um, Trisha's a point in time now, isn't she? It's not, it's not just, you don't say, you know, one till four, you go until Trisha. Trisha o'clock is four. Um, so, <laughs> Trisha time. So, um, we've been talking about this actually from 10 o'clock or I've been asking you about it anyway, and that is the male contraceptive pill. British men are the first in the world to test this new male contraceptive pill. And I've been asking you uh, whether you, as a man, would take it, uh, or as a woman, would you trust a man who says he's taken it? And what's been really interesting is that so far, I've had calls from men saying, we can't be trusted, we will lie. We will say that we've taken it when we haven't. Um, so it's been really, really interesting because I thought there'd be lots of women. There are a couple of women. Uh, this one from Penny, it says, uh, Morning Petri, I doubt very many men would remember to take the male pill. 
I certainly would never have trusted my husband to take it. And how many men having casual sex, etc., would take it? They would just tell the poor unfortunate women they were on it. Who would believe it? Until nine months later, proved otherwise. No way. And that's from Penny in uh, in Essex. Diane says, um, the male pill. Good God, no. I would not trust a man to tie his shoelaces properly. Ha, ha, ha. I wonder, though, if this is a certain generation of women that are saying that. I'm clearly myself in that. Um, and, that, you know, maybe there is more trust between younger generations and younger men uh, would, you know, perhaps want to take... I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's an incredible thing because 60 years ago, the female pill was introduced. Um, 16 volunteers will test out the birth control treatment. This is a group of British men become the first in the world to test this new male contraceptive pill that scientists could believe could transform how the sexes share responsibility for birth control. The drug, it's got a real catchy name, it's called YCT529, is initially being given to these volunteers at a clinic in Nottingham. Um, it works by shutting off a protein called retinoic acid receptor alpha ra alpha ra alpha uh, inside the body this prevents ra alpha from binding to a form of vitamin a and in turn this should stop the formation of sperm in the testes so that's why so it's non-hormonal the biggest problem with the last one was that it was hormonal well believe it or not uh, we have here the developer the actual developer of the uh, male contraceptive pill, and it's Dr. Uh, Gunda Georg. A very good afternoon to you. All right. Um, uh, good, af good morning to you. Oh, good morning <laughs> for you, exactly. <laughs> Professor of Medicinal Chemistry at the Uni of uh, Minnesota. This is quite a leap forward from the old hormonal approach to the male contraceptive pill, isn't it? Yes, it sure is. And I tell you, I've been working on it uh, for uh, almost you know, exactly 20 years. And so it's very, very rewarding to see that it, one of the approaches that we have been taken is actually getting to the stage where there is uh, going, where there is a clinical trial now. So it's just amazing. And I was actually present in Nottingham when the first man took the dose. So it was a very emotional event for me, moment for me as well as um, the company, uh, <clears throat> uh, I guess, representatives who, uh, you know, took it to this particular point. Because in an academic setting, you can do only so much. And then it becomes very, very expensive to do all the preclinical testing to make sure a drug is safe. And so that's where the company took over. And they have done, actually, um, <clears throat> this part um, of the development in, in record time. So it's... Um, yeah, is, is that it's a great moment. In, is that why it's being tested on British men? No other reason. <clears throat> uh, so um, um, I guess uh, the company has actually um, uh, applied uh, to carry out uh, clinical trials in several different countries. And it was the UK and New Zealand that approved it first. And so that's why um, I guess um, it's done in Britain. And of course, there is also this company or this clinic, uh, Quotient, and uh, the company had prior good experience with them. And so that all came together, Great Britain, the company that they had worked with before. And uh, so that's why, why I guess it, it was done uh, first in Britain. It's, it's quite a small group, isn't it? 16. Correct. That, yeah. that's that's quite a small sample group to to go with why is it why have you started or why have they started with such a uh, such a small group is there, are there any yeah. concerns around it um you know anytime um you know you give a drug to the first person there's always the concern that there could be something happening that was not anticipated from the safety studies in animals. We have pretty good evidence that this is a safe drug because we have tested it already in non-human primates. And that's as close as you can mm. get. Many drugs are going to clinical trial without going through the non-human primates. But that's why we feel really confident about the drug in terms of efficacy. Uh, the uh, sperm counts were lowered in the in the monkeys and then when the drug was withdrawn the sperm counts came back so we don't anticipate this but you never know what's going to happen when you know the first person takes it and that's why also the first people who get it in, in most clinical trials is a very very low dose 
Okay, it's not an right. effic efficacious dose, but it's just to say, we give a small dose, we make sure that nothing happening, and then you dose escalate, okay? So yeah. that's what's happening right now. This, I started off this program uh, nearly three hours ago saying that, that this is an area of, of medicine, if you like, of, of science, oh, that, yeah. that it seems like large pharmaceutical companies have not been that keen to invest in, right? Because yes. uh, we know mm -hmm. that they only invest when there is a huge market that they can profit from. It is one of the, 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 the fears here that, 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 you know, men and their masculinity uh, is very, uh, very attached to, oh, look what I can produce and I've got a high sperm count. And that, that it's all tied in uh, with the masculine. Not, women, women don't go, oh, I've got thousands of eggs. I'm all right. Do you know what I mean? There's a very different way of thinking about fertility and masculinity uh, is linked very much to to that. Um, th th there is a belief that not men, not not millions of men, will want to take this because it might interfere with their masculinity. Well, maybe um, in some cultures that may be the case, but. Uh, Recent market research uh, seems to suggest that there is actually quite a bit of acceptance uh, for a male contraceptive uh, pill worldwide. And uh, surprisingly, in countries like Bangladesh or even in Africa, acceptance is relatively high. And um, so I'm, I'm very, I guess I'm very positive that there's going to be a very large market. So I would say eventually the larger pharmaceutical companies um, will come in and will probably take this forward because this small company uh, doesn't have the ability right. to um, distribute this yeah. worldwide. Yeah. yeah. Is there a concern with you as, I mean, I, mean I, I can't even imagine how brilliant your brain must be to even think uh, that far outside of a box to come up with this idea I mean, is extraordinary. But but is there a concern with you as the the producer of this, de the developer of this, the science behind this, that that this could lead to um, uh, you know unwanted sexually transmitted diseases? Because at the moment, uh, you know, most men I would say are only persuaded to to wear a condom on the basis that it might prevent them from becoming fathers. If they haven't got that issue, then of course there is the issue of sexually transmitted diseases because a lot of people go, I'm not going to do both. Yeah, no, I, this, this drug is not going to prevent uh, sexually transmitted diseases. Mm. So these types of precautions have still to be taken. But think about it, you know, there are, of course, many people who are in committed relationships. And for them, True. I think it yeah. would make a lot of sense. And also, you know, you, you, you said, oh, I don't trust my husband or my, my boyfriend to do this. You know, so I guess, first of all, you can see whether he took the pill, right? It's going to be right there in your bathroom or wherever. So you can check it if you need to. Uh, the other thing is, um, you know, you can actually test uh, whether a man is infertile. And I don't know whether you know about this, but there are these test kits. They're just like the COVID test kits. And so seminal fluid is being put in. And if this second uh, line is appearing, then it means the man is fertile. If there's no second line, just like, like in COVID, if it's not uh, appearing, then we know, um, it, you know the sperm levels are below um, what's needed for uh, fertilization. That's a hell of a passion killer. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a yeah, minute, yeah. I just want to do a sign. <laughs> just hold your horses there, buddy. I, mean, <laughs> I just want to do a, a, a test on you. Um, <laughs> how did you, uh, just as a point of interest, how did you think of this uh, as a means of being um, uh, something that would be a contraceptive? You know, 20 years ago, uh, the uh, National Institute of health here in the United States issued this request for application, meaning they were promoting the idea of non-hormonal contraception and to do drug discovery like I have been doing. And I saw this and I thought this is a really, I guess, wonderful idea because I think there is a need. And I tell you, whenever I talk to women about this, they tell me it's about time. Yeah. Okay. So, and I thought it's about time and I wanted to get into it and I didn't maybe quite realize that it would take so many years, but I've been at it, you know, the last 20 years and I'm 
having other projects that I'm taking forward. I'm very dedicated. I'm one of the few people dedicated uh, Absolutely. To, to this field. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's what I was going to say. I, I just wondered if it was because the, the pharmaceutical companies were concerned. But I have to it's tell that. you, when I, when I do a, a phone in uh, on, on pe being a parent or whatever, a lot of men will call and say, I, I was tricked into being a parent. I, I, you know, and I think a lot of men will take <laughs> it because yes. they don't, they, they can then be in control of their own parenting the same way women were in the 60s and i think that is an incredibly important step i'm the mother of a son so i'm i'd be like yep it's, take the pill <laughs> i'm not ready to be a grandma yet <laughs> you are brilliant i uh, honestly i i bow down to your uh, scientific mind mine i don't have a scientific bone in my body but i appreciate that let me say it's also teamwork okay yeah. so it's i mean um i guess i'm the maybe if you want to say this a team leader but i have many people work with me of right course. uh who designs and decides you know these types of compounds there was deborah wolgenbus at columbia university she's a reproductive biologist she's my collaborator i have many other collaborators you know so it's like everything in drug discovery it's teamwork yeah. you need experts uh, of the various uh i guess uh, disciplines uh, that that are coming in together when you do it, uh, the drug discovery process. Yeah, well, I, I'm very busy. This program I do all myself. I've got no team, no support. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. There's hundreds of them in there. They're all they're all there. Um, I, I'm I'm like I said. I, I bow down to your brilliance and your team's brilliance. It's extraordinary that people out there like you who are moving science forward in this way. And thank you very much. And it's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gunda Georg, there, who's a professor of medicinal uh, chemistry at the Uni of Minnesota and a developer of the male contraceptive pill. Um, just before I go into uh, a break, uh, which I have to take, I'm duty bound to do so, I do want to know if you would take the male pill, the contraceptive pill. And if you're a woman, and honestly, it's so many men are calling about this, saying, don't trust us, we're going to lie, we're going to fib. Um, so I want to know from you if you would take the male contraceptive pill. This one is brilliant. This uh, message here has come through from Stephanie who says, uh, the only way this will work is to say it'll increase your sex drive. Anything that strokes the male <laughs> ego will fly off the shelves. And that's from uh, Stephanie in Surrey. I remember I used to be a sort of financial um, journalist and talk about the markets and things like that. And um, there was one time I was doing uh, a, a, a chat with somebody about, um, uh, was it called something rubber? Anyway, it was about condoms, right, uh, selling condoms. And uh, they, they discovered that in the countries like Japan and China, that if they sold condoms with, you know, small, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be personal, but it, small con, they wouldn't sell. So what they had to do is label all the condom packets with large and extra large and then they flew off the shelves that is the truth that is a fact i'm just telling you how it goes uh, right i'm going to take a, a quick break and uh, but and then the last part of this program is is all about you so i'm going to be taking your calls your comments and finding out finally if you have any talented dogs out there so stay where you are Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. 
So the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking to a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walked into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place uh, where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. Hi, good afternoon. It is Petri here with you for the next 15 minutes or so. And then Johnny Gould will be here. In fact, he'll be in a bit earlier than that to, uh, to come and uh, tell us what he's got coming up on his programme. Uh, we've had a couple more messages about dogs. Says, uh, I have two dogs and when one is on my knee, the other one pretends to be super interested in a toy. And when the other one jumps down to go and investigate it, she then jumps uh, on my knee, taking her place. Very clever deception. That is very clever. Uh, that's from Judith in uh, Belfast. And um, Mark from Bristol says, I, I thought Bailey was a Shih Tzu. He said, my cousin bought a dog purely because of its crossbreed, which um, a cross between a Jack Russell and a Shih Tzu. What would that be called? Uh, and a rather naughty dog around the house. He lives up to his joint breed name. His actual name is Jack. It reminds me of a joke, uh, and I can get away with this because it's only you hearing something different. Um, so I one, one time went to, uh, to visit a zoo, and all it had, there was nothing else there. All the cages were empty. Everything was absolutely dead, nothing there, apart from one small black and white dog. And I remember thinking to myself, that's a shit zoo. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Right, uh, so let me know. Let me know. <laughs> Come on, you've heard that one before. You've, you've heard that one before. No? Oh, gosh. Uh, anyway, um, let's talk to Mick, who's in Beauvais uh, this, uh, this afternoon. Mick, uh, good afternoon to Hello. you. Hello. Hello there. Uh, hello. Yes, right, the, the, the pill. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 would, I would take it. Uh, would you? Listen, um, yeah, well, well, look, it's not really worth it now, but, I mean, I... <laughs> I uh, Don't say it. Never I say to... never. Charlie Chaplin was having kids <laughs> into his 80s. Never say yeah, never. Well, yeah, OK. Uh, I'll probably forget what I was taking it for. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I, I mean, it's, it's a question of responsibility. I had a snip 50 years ago now. All right. Um, if, they'd, if they'd have been... Probably. I had a job getting it, actually, because I was only 25. <gasps> that um, is young. Did not... you already have children? Yeah. I had to argue for it because uh, we had we had two kids, one of each, and uh, my wife got thrombosis if she took the pill. Okay. And so uh, there was only two options. We either 
uh, either she had it or, and it's much easier for the men to have had it. So I had it. But, I mean, at the time, I may not have been given that option if there'd have been a pill. Yeah, that's true. Probably been told to, to, to take the pill. So there you are. So I would take it. Now, if I... Yeah, I would. I'd, I'd take it. I think. Would you, uh, you? You say you've uh, got one of each. So you've got a boy. Um, yeah. Are Are you? Would you tell? Would you say girl. to him, "Look, have take the pill because you can. Yeah. Um, you You are then in control. You're the master of whether you become a dad or not." Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because there's a lot of stories, isn't there, about men who go, "I didn't." didn't want to be a dad, I didn't plan to be a dad. She got herself pregnant, which is a line I love. And I was like, how did she do that? Uh, but, you know, yeah. Yeah. she got herself pregnant and I'm stuck with her. Or I'm stuck with a kid that I didn't want. And, and I'm afraid that yeah. is quite a common reaction. Uh, so it, it would be great, I think, for men to be able to have that control about whether they become parents or not. Yes, it would be. And then first, there's another reason why I, I, would, I would take it. If um if I were well, maybe if I was a bit younger yeah I'd, and maybe if it was blue <laughs> but, uh, now t calm down uh, <laughs> calm down Mick so um it, 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 if you had been able to to take the pill presumably then there would be n no need for uh, to, to have the snip um, did you ever yeah. regret having the snip was there ever a point where you thought actually I would like another kid no. <laughs> no, never. Never, ever. No. Is that a reflection no, on your kids? A... Or is that just yeah. that two is enough? <laughs> well, no, two, two is enough. We had, one, we had one of each. It was the early 70s. We had three-day weeks and all that oh, gosh, trouble. Yeah. And, and just, and just uh, well, two was enough. Yeah. So that, that was it. I mean, OK, if we'd have had two girls and maybe... But how long would we have carried on? To I know. Uh, that's the thing, so isn't it? It would have been, yeah. That was the argument with the doctors. You know, they told me that, um, oh, you're very, very young. So, you know, I mean, my argument was, well, well I was, I'm old enough to bring two children into the world, but you're telling me I'm not old enough to decide I don't want any more. Yeah. I, I want to ask you a question um, now. So, you've said that, you know, with with one of each, you would say, definitely say to your to your son. Take the pill because you're in control of your own fertility. Then, uh, parenthood. Yeah, would you tell Would reasons. you tell your daughter to trust that a man had taken it? Oh no, because we're ah, liars. You see, therein lies the problem. <laughs> <laughs> therein lies the major no. issue. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. Yeah. So you know, you, you'd say to your son, "Take it," but you'd say to your daughter, "Don't yeah. trust it." There was one back in the early sixties, a male contraceptive pill, as I recall. Yeah, there was, but that that was um, uh, altered testosterone, um, and it, 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 there were too many side of, not not dangerous side effects, but the side effects of lack of libido and and uh, yeah. you know all sorts of things. So there there was that men were absolutely not keen on taking that, but this one is no, it's not no. hormonal, so um, it could be it could be the answer. But I love that that you tell your boy but <laughs> warn your girl. And I think that's the that's the issue, Mick in Beauvoir. Uh, thank you very much indeed. That's in France, in case you're wondering. Um, Ian is uh, on the line now. And Ian is calling about, right at the beginning of the programme here, we talked about Ukraine uh, and whether it was time to be, or, you know, all in and help them out to, to win this war or to, to just get out altogether. And this is because in Hungary, Orban um, has said, look, they're never going to win. Uh, we're throwing good money after bad. We might as well just pull out now. Just forget it. Um, so Ian has called about that. Ian, um, good afternoon to you. Uh, what do you think uh, about the time to time to just leave them to it? Good afternoon, Patrick. Good afternoon. Um, not to leave them to it, to stop stoking up the war that's just going on and on and on like they're done in the First World well, War. Well, we knew it would. You know, somebody said right at the beginning this could turn into a Vietnam. Yeah, it's a Maya. And um, and that person you had on earlier on the phone, that professor, he's got a bad rep as being an extreme right wing warmonger. I checked him up. Yeah, well, don't believe everything you you read, and also there is a bias. If you ask a question yeah, yes, in a biased way, you're always going to get a biased answer. I've always yeah. found Anthony Gleese to be actually quite uh, quite central. 
uh, to be honest with you, Ma whenever Margaret I've talked about war with him, because I'm an ex-war correspondent, so I can mm. smell BS from a mile away. Mm. Well, I'm an ex-soldier, and yeah. I can smell BS as well. Yeah, and I Margaret don't smell it from him. Mm. Margaret Thatcher said, once you become throwing insults at people, like calling people a skunk, you've lost the argument. Have you? That's what Margaret said. Yeah, that's what Margaret said. Calling, calling a, a leader of a country, putting his own country first, calling him a skunk, that, then you've lost the argument. That's what Margaret Thatcher said. And uh, UNICEF... And you believe everything uh, that Margaret Thatcher says? No, I didn't, but they, okay. they were, people from that point of view will quite happily quote Margaret Thatcher when it suits them, so I'm throwing it back at well, them. He, but he didn't. So... I mean, no, all he... I'm trying to caution you is is the, is the own own the, the conversation you're having in your own head about this. He didn't uh, 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 quote Margaret Thatcher. He didn't no, uh, do any of those things. But I know, but you are. I'm but you're but Margaret you're putting Thatcher. words and thoughts into his head that that that, that didn't come out of it yeah, yeah, when I was talking it, to him. He... He oh, he called, he yeah, he called Orban a skunk. But he's not the only person to think that. I mean, this is a man that went to Beijing to shake hands with uh, Vladimir Putin while, while playing both sides of the fence. So he, he may have used strong language to describe somebody, but he's not the only person that thinks it. Well, uh, according to UNICEF, the world spends more on arms in two hours than it does in 12 months on its children. Yeah. And perhaps we should change our priorities. Yeah, well, well we should. But until the, the, the countries stop making billions from selling arms, uh, nothing will change. If there, well, if there the isn't war, you can't sell weapons. Uh, yeah, but, it, it, you know, that, that's just... That's, the, the world is turned around by money. They don't care about people. Why, well, what's the point in think... caring about people? You can't make any money. Why do you think the war uh, in uh, Ukraine was started? Because the arms industry was losing money because the Cold War was over. And now well, I think the war was the started in Ukraine when rush. Russia decided it was going to free Ukraine from Nazis. That's what he said. Uh, and, and Russia, uh, I mean, we, we all thought they had newer technology than they've got and they rumbled in on Chinese tires that burst within a few weeks uh, and machines that broke down on the side of the road. It, it was started by Russia. It wasn't started by Saudi Arabia or uh, any of the other arms manufacturers. Oh, I, I thought the war was started when we deposed the existing president of Ukraine and installed a Western puppet regime after promising Mikhail Gorbachev that NATO would not move eastward after the end of the Cold War. Yeah, and I mean, that's quite... A, you know, that, but, but history changes and so does, so does policy with new leaders. It's always, it's always been the way. Mikhail Gorbachev was a very different man, and we made a massive mistake by not pulling Russia on side at the time of Gorbachev's uh, uh, reign, if you like. Um, and instead, we got, we got Putin, who uh, you know, brought himself up through the ranks of an, of an incredibly violent and evil organisation, and, and then ends up being president. And, of course, things change, don't they, when you get a new president? It's, it's, it's crazy to say... Well, look what happened under Mikhail Gorbachev, because look what happened under Margaret Thatcher, look what happened under Tony Blair. Things change when you get a different leader. That's just the truth of it. Um, but anyway, good to talk to you. And he says, not one more penny uh, for weapons in Ukraine, uh, and we shouldn't be supporting them. I, I, I mean, uh, listen, I've been a war reporter. War is absolutely disgusting, and has got no place on this planet. But, unfortunately, money is involved, and it will never change. Uh, and the idea that it's just going to somehow we'll all be peace-loving, uh, huggy people, absolute rot, never going to check. While there's money to be made, no one cares. Uh, that's as simple as that, and it's quite defeatist, but that's the way, uh, that's the way it is. Um, so um, I want to go through a couple more messages with you just before Johnny Gould comes in. Um, this one says, we absolutely should give Ukraine everything they need and more. Anyone that complains should vote in a government that can manage money better, reference HS2, or I'd be happy if they admitted Ukraine to NATO now. Legislate, uh, uh, legislate around the troops on the ground issue and pit our money where our mouth is. I think we've, we've, we said we'd be there for them and um, we absolutely are not uh, Robin has said uh, what they're trying to do is sterilize the male population can't you see that it's all part of their plan to reduce the population well I think war's doing a pretty good job of that uh, frankly at the moment uh, Robin and I, uh, I'm, I don't agree with you on that but then I've seen all of your other messages and frankly 
uh, uh, if we pay more energy bills because of unpaid bills, uh, will we get the money back if the energy company gets the money back? No, Dave. <laughs> of course not. They already make hundreds of millions in profit. Um, and this one on the male contraceptive pill, why don't they put them into rat traps? This would reduce the population of rats, which must be a good thing. Mick, excellent idea. Excellent idea. I'll tell you what's another good idea, and that's staying exactly where you are for the next three hours at least, because Johnny Gold is there. Oh, Petri, what a lovely link. Oh, look, we got the pink. This is, the, was this that Hayley? Uh, was it Hayley? Yeah, was it, it Hayley was, told you to wear pink? It's called Synchronicity. Ah, That's what that, it that is. That is the wonderful producer that is taking over <laughs> after my frankly rubbish one, but <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, and, and she wears pink all the time. She's pink and, pink and cheerful. Well, it's good to be in one place reading from the same hymn sheet... Yeah, well, it's actually, it's, uh, I haven't seen you for ages. It's been a while. It has been a while. Crocodile. You're good. You lost a lot of weight. I, well, I've, yeah, I've sort of yeah. been trying. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah felt me for telly. Is it rude to mention I'm not, that? I'm not running for office, though, <laughs> like, like politicians when be. they lose weight. I haven't right, been what to have the got, jungle. What have you got coming up? OK, so the stories today, you know, now I'm smelling that there's going to be a bit of negative politics now mm. uh, leading up to the next general election. Sunak on the back foot. Uh, he's going to put Starmer on trial. And I'm saying, is that going to affect the way that you vote? Or can we not have some positivity? Not from, a chance. From the uni party. <laughs> I want some policies and things that work. Mm. And can we not have a hair's breadth between the two main parties on the premise that in a binary system like we have first past the post, you're going to vote for one of them. So instead of negative, can we not have a bit of positive? So that's the question. That's a good question. Are dirty politics going to affect your vote? Um, question of sport. <gasps> this is the BBC turning in on itself. Well, that's after they got Paddy McGuinness to introduce You can't it. do that. You can't do that. And Sue was lovely. Yeah. OK, you know, sometimes we move on, but they did make the wrong decision. Same with Football Focus. Football Focus was something, was an appointment to view. Mm. And I fear that they might get rid of that. The only thing that saves football focus is the amount of picture they've got from the Premier League, so they can show all the goals. Well, they moved Question of Sport up to Salford as well, didn't they? And then mm. they couldn't get the guests. Right. So the BBC have not learned about decentralising the BBC on certain programmes. You can't do it because you don't no. get the... And there's lots of back office BBC that they could put in Belfast oh my or God. Leeds. Do you know what? There's so many clipboard Johnnies that wander around the BBC with their clipboards and, and having sandwiches and cups of tea and meetings. Oh, if they got rid of them, it's like the NHS, get rid of that middle management yeah. dross that do nothing, spend the money somewhere sensible. That's right.